podcast live in front of as many people as we can. What's up, Gorzibfig? That's how that name's pronounced. It took me a second to process that. I was like, well, how is this name going to be pronounced? And then it was, uh, yeah. But uh, what's up? Is that Panora? Panera? Panera mentioned? Panora, Panora, uh, Astra. Hey, what's up? How's it going? What's up? Uh, Moi, no salad. How's it going? Ava. What's up, Rachel? Uh, Kelly. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Hey, how's it going? What's up? What's up? What's up? How's it going, Leon? Um, how's everyone doing? Uh, what's up, Anor? Hey, uh, glad to see everyone from the discord. Um, Hey, how's it going? Buck Wild, thank you so much for that hand heart. Very kind of you. Uh, Just keep on double tapping on that screen, sharing it with your friends. Let's try to get this live in front of as many people as we can. Uh, J Dollar Sign, hey, how's it going? Um, Oh, look, a ghost. Hi, how are you? Um, Hey, what's up? Uh, Carla, how's it going? How's it going? How's it going? Oh, I can. (laughs) All right. Uh, All right. Uh, How's it going? H-R-I-S. What's up? What's up? Uh, yeah, back once again, uh, got my name changed back. Steph, thank you so much. Uh, I wanted to change it for the bit. Uh, can I self promote here? Fuck no. You don't get to self promote here. Absolutely not. Um, but if you're in that Gust Request box, make sure that you're 18 or older, that you believe in the God of the Bible, Torah, or Quran, and that you have an argument which does not involve personal experience. Uh, if that's not you, uh, then I'm going to uh, move on to the next guest uh, expeditiously quickly. And with that, we can go to the very first guest. Um, you would be invited to... You would be invited to Alicia. Hey, what's up? How's it going? What's How up, old are you? Elizabeth, thank you. Appreciate it. Damn, I'm trying to get away from the parents. Yeah. Uh, so. How old are you? 25. We've spoken before. Okay. Uh, so uh, what's your strongest argument for the existence of God that does not involve personal experience? Well, I think one of the uh, the best evidences is just uh, the fact that our DNA, in fact, communicates with each other. Uh, it displays uh, structures that can that are dependent on the mind, pretty much. Uh, why is eighty five percent of our DNA completely useless? Um, I would say that sometimes our our DNA makes them. Um, uh, you could call them mistakes, right? But it's only in like every like three hundred million or something, like, or maybe maybe it's more than that. But no, it's a, it's eighty five percent of our DNA is just totally useless. Yeah, I don't I don't think that negates the fact that our DNA that enables us to be who we are is in fact uh, coded information. I think what it to me demonstrates is that wherever our DNA came from, it certainly wasn't intelligently designed. Uh, an additional question that you're going to have no answer for. Um, why does our DNA uh, contain the potential to become a disorder that causes two year olds to try to gouge their own eyes out? Why would that be a part of God's design for our DNA? So I don't think that would have been a part of his design. I think that would just be a natural consequence of sin. Oh, uh, that's just nonsense, right? Like, we don't need to speculate about whether, like, what, what supernatural explanation we want for this phenomena, because we actually know the real explanation for it. Just based on the way that our DNA is structured, something that happens quite frequently uh, is that there's various mutations, there's mobile elements, because our DNA, the structure of it is is innately unstable, uh, which leads to things like lesh Nyan syndrome, uh, which, again, is is, is a disorder that causes two-year-olds to attempt to gouge their own eyes out yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't call it unstable right because um that's what like, the biologists call it i mean yeah but i would just disagree right because like there are like minorities and majorities right and there's like sort of a norm when it comes to the way human biology works right so I would just say that you can't use the minority to argue for the majority, right? We know that human body, the human anatomy works a certain way and it works, it works very well, right? That's how we're able to... <laughs> what are you talking about? Reproduce no, it doesn't. I would, say, I would say it does. 
Our anatomy is terrible. Wait, also, wait, wait, wait. So it's extremely funny that you say that you can't use the minority to argue for the majority uh, because the majority of our DNA is useless, but you would cite the tiny amount of DNA that is useful as evidence for God. So you either get your cake or you get to eat it too. You don't get both. So can we use the minority to argue or to make points or can we not? No, not at all, because in this instance... Uh... Gotcha. So then you just tear your own argument in half. So then you no, can't... No, not at all, because... Because 85% this... of our DNA is useless. So the percent of our DNA that's useful, which is your evidence for God, is the minority. Yeah, I would just say these two things aren't contingent upon each other because and with the DNA, right, the majority that works is quite literally what makes up the minority. I mean, the majority of, um, you know, the majority uh, doesn't work. The majority is useless. 85% is just completely useless. Yeah, when I'm talking about. You could say the minority of the DNA that does work is the DNA that makes up the majority of regularly functioning humans today, as we know, like the humans that are in office and stuff like that. Yeah, wait, so you know? why would God include 85% of this like garbage? Why wouldn't he just make all of our DNA functional? Why would he just include so much trash? And what do you be, and what do you mean by like useless? It doesn't do anything. The messenger RNA gets to these strands of DNA, takes one look at them and discards them. It doesn't get expressed into anything. Well, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't say that automatically means that it's useless, right? I think it literally, wait, wait, wait. So what do you what do you think DNA does? DNA communicates and replicates. Oh, okay, wait, wait. But what is it in what way does it communicate? Through what mechanism? Um mRNA. Yeah, cool. Wait, so if it if it's removed from the mRNA strand, does it communicate? Um I don't know, probably not. No, the answer is no. <laughs> but maybe that doesn't mean it's not doing something else. That doesn't mean that this what does it do? DNA isn't working. What does it do? I would say it's just making up us. All the DNA in our body makes up us. No, this DNA could be completely discarded and there would be no difference. How do you know that for sure? Because the messenger RNA certainly has no problem discarding it and it makes no difference. But it's still in the body though. Like who's to say like if you were to remove all this DNA from the body that you wouldn't um, unalive or cease to exist? Yeah, because lots of this DNA is like literally just repeating the exact same sequences over and over and over again. It's useless, uh, which is why the messenger RNA, it, it's just like spliced out of it. It doesn't get expressed into anything. So the way uh, genes actually make us up uh, is by getting expressed as proteins. Um, but that doesn't happen with these because it gets discarded uh, directly from the, the DNA, which means that it's useless. Why would literally any part of our DNA be useless if it was made by a perfect creator? That's a really bad design. Yeah, so I think just because we don't see um, it having a, a purpose or function you would probably use, it doesn't it doesn't negate the fact that the dna that does work makes up us right and that's why we're able to do everything we're able to do right like yeah that's work. that's really nice so do you agree that god is perfect yes so then his design for us must also be perfect is that correct um i don't know i don't know if i would use the word perfect in that instance oh wait so is god a perfect designer When the Bible does it says he created things perfect, it said he created things good. So like unless you can unless you're using those words interchangeably, then then I would say no, right? Because if he gave us the ability, if he gave us agency, right? Because I don't believe in free will. I believe in I have I hold a deterministic world of view. If he gave us the, the ability to make choices and those that ability would breed um disobedience or opposition against him that would mean that we aren't perfect. So do you, do you think that, uh, do you agree that perfect means maximally good in all things? Um, no, because I think something can be perfectly imbalanced or perfectly violent, right? But those things wouldn't be good per se. 
Yeah, wait, so in what sense is God perfect? I would say God is perfect in the sense that Hmm. I would say God is perfect in the sense and he creates things for a perfect purpose. Oh, so purpose. you're just using the you're using the word that you're trying to define the definition itself. Uh, do you want to give me a non-circular definition? Well, I think when you're discussing foundational concepts, they're going to inherently reference themselves. That's not so, true at all. I think no. that's true, right? So, so can you so can you um, explain science without using science? Yeah, easily. Yeah. Uh, science is the process of empirical observation uh, whereby you come to conclusions based on the data that you that you gather with your sensory organs. Yeah, that's still describing science. That's describing Yeah, wait, wait. It's because it's defining it, but it doesn't use the word science in it. So that's the distinction, right? A definition defines. Uh, that's not a contention. My problem with your definition of perfection is that it contains the word perfection in it. You've constructed a circular definition. Okay, well... I can take out the word perfection for you. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. God so creates then... things with a, a concrete purpose. Oh, wait. So would I be perfect if I created things with a concrete perfect purpose? Um, no. Gotcha. So then when you say that God is perfect, what do you mean by that? God is perfect because he... um. I think there's I think there's multiple things you can say, but one of the things, again, like I said, is that he creates things with specific purpose. He he If if I create unknowing. things with specific purpose, does that make me perfect? If you create things with specific purpose? No, because yeah, it's that more than that. It, gotcha, more than then, gotcha, then that's not your definition. Perfect. Okay. It's just one part of my definition. Gotcha. I don't know if I can fully, fully describe God's purpose. It, it sounds like you have no idea how to describe God because it's very loosely held together. You well, can't even describe is, this like basic quality of God. Well, I think we can only describe certain aspects of God. I don't think we can fully, you know, comprehend what like true perfectness is when it comes to uh, a supernatural being that creates I'm just looking for a basic universe. description. I'm not trying to fully understand it. I just want like a basic description of what perfection is. Well, when it comes to God, I don't I don't think Yeah, I don't know. I don't think you can fully describe it. I think he just I'm not asking for a full description. I'm asking <clears throat> for a basic description. So do you agree that God is maximally proficient in all the things that he does? Maximally proficient? Yeah. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by maximally proficient? Yeah, that he is uh, in all areas that he um, acts in, he is good to the best possible degree. Um, yeah, you could say that. Yeah, gotcha. So then God is is good at designing humans to the best possible degree. So there's no design of humans that could possibly be better. Um, well, I don't know, because you could say that he he created the angels better. Right, but he created us with a different specific purpose. And yeah, but there's, but I'm just saying, like, there's no way that he could, for whatever purpose he had, there is no way that he could have designed humans to be better. Say that one more time. For whatever purpose he had, there is no way he could have designed humans to be better. Um. Sorry, background noise. Um, yeah, I don't know because, like I said, the Bible doesn't say that he created us perfect. It just says that he created us good. So he, yeah, he wait, created us, do you he think the, that we were good, good enough. Do you think the words God created us perfect came out of my mouth even a single time? 
No, not at all, but it seems like that's what you're implying. No, no, not at all. Just that God's designing process of it. Not that humans themselves are perfect, but that our design is perfect because the design was created by God. God has full control over our design in your worldview, which means that uh, if God makes us, if God does something and he himself is perfect, then his actions are also perfect. Um, a perfect designer is going to create perfect designs for whatever purpose he's trying to achieve. But that designer could also purposely create something that is imperfect, according to his perfect design. So did, did God design imperfectly? I would say God designed a perfect purpose. Did God design the human anatomy perfectly? Um, I don't know. You you don't know? You have no idea? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, like well, said, well, we can it, just it, do it, a, a basic thought experiment. Would God have been better if he did design the human anatomy perfectly? Would he have been better? Yeah, would he have been better? Yeah, I, I think that's a question that can't be answered. Which part of it? Is it? Wait, it can't be answered or you won't answer it because you know that it tears your worldview in half? No, I just literally think it can't be answered because we're trying to delve into the mind of God and possibilities that we don't know, right? Like, we don't know if there if there's a better design to humans or... There is a better I mean, design. Like, easily, there's easily and obviously a better design to humans. Get rid of all the useless DNA. But again, what if we just don't know the purpose? We do know what it does, and we know that it does nothing. It's not that we don't know what it does, it's that we know it does nothing, because DNA gets expressed into proteins, and this DNA does not get expressed into proteins. It, could just, it's get, it gets discarded on site. But what if there's a reason why there's DNA that doesn't get, uh, that doesn't turn to protein? What if there's a reason for that? Yeah, the, the reason for that is because the way this DNA came about was not by God intelligently designing it, but rather by the careful or by the, uh, by the random tinkering of evolution uh, that our DNA is held together by duct tape. Uh, it's evolution isn't extremely random, chaotic. Evolution isn't random, though. Yeah, of course not. But, yeah, so the, yeah, but so the actual, so wait, wait, wait but the, the mutation process is random. That evolution selects for the the fit creatures, but whether an individual is a fit creature and in what way they are fit, that's going to be random. And mutations that arrive, how how do these mutations come Through about? Through mutagens, lots of ways. Yeah, but like, what's the reason that the, that that they mutate? Is what's it to, the reason? Is it, lots is it to of adapt ways to their environment. Well, no. So mutations just happen. Uh, they happen via mutagens through uh, your DNA getting mutated via a variety of different factors like UV rays or various foods or uh, literally just like your your cellular anatomy fucking up and cell uh, re reproduction. Yeah. So again, I would attribute that to the fallen state of man. Oh, wait, so then why did all this stuff exist before the fallen state of man? Um, I don't think anything was before the fallen state of man. Yeah, what about the dinosaurs? Yeah, I think we were here with them, most likely. Do you have literally a shred of evidence for that? So wait, 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 I, I just want to be clear. So you know better than every paleontologist living on the earth. Is that correct? You just know better? Absolutely. Gotcha, gotcha. So what's your evidence? Let's hear it. The evidence is the Bible says it. <laughs> and what's the evidence that the Bible is true? The evidence that the Bible is true is that it's the word of God. <laughs> That's just your conclusion. You're trying to prove that God is real and you're appealing to the Bible being the word of God. What's the evidence yeah, I'm that it's the word of God? Yeah, presupposing that God is real. God, so. Oh, wait. Oh, so the Bible is true because you're just presupposing that the Bible... Oh, my... Oh! Oh, yeah, oh, I know. It's profound. You just presuppose your conclusion. Oh! And do you think that that makes your position intellectually rigorous? 
Absolutely, right? Because everything, every every um belief starts with a presupposition, right? Yeah, so, you, so you presuppose a Bronze Age fairy tale, whereas other people presuppose, like, induction. Yeah, and scientists presuppose um, that nothing came from nothing. I mean, everything came from nothing. Yeah, wait, which scientist says that? Um, a lot of them, right? Name one. Um, I don't know. I can't name any. <laughs> really racking right. your brain. Wait, so how do you feel comfortable making all these claims? Wait, I actually name one scientist. Can you name one scientist? Not even related. I just want to know if you can name one scientist. Yeah, Einstein. <laughs> oh, good job. No, that's uh, that's sick as fuck. Einstein's a good one. Um, so why do you feel comfortable making claims about any of this when you can't even name a single scientist who holds the positions that you're accusing them of having? Well, Einstein said that the universe haven't had a beginning, right? That's just an appeal to authority. I don't care what Einstein said. Well, you just asked me to name a scientist, and I just gave you one, right? And he said no, that's that's totally fine. But just saying, like, well, God's real because Einstein says so is an appeal to authority. I don't care. Well, I think I think any argument is going to appeal to some sort, some type of authority, right? Because all these ideas came from someone else who created these ideas, right? Well, it's going to what it's going to be appealing to is the evidence that the scientific process is reliable, given the fact that all the technology that stems out of it uh, is also pretty reliable. Whereas your book, on the other hand, uh, claims that the Earth is uh, 8000 years old, claims that the Earth is flat, claims that outer space is water, claims that unicorns exist, uh, claims that the uh, Earth is older than the sun. What? It makes makes a whole bunch of nonsense claims. Yeah, so atheists also have no like there's also no evidence to say that there's not a creator it's just there's just not sure there is absolutely not yeah the fact that our cellular anatomy is uh good that that from our cellular anatomy arises things like cancer that's the evidence of no creator that's not evidence of a creator that's just evidence of like you said mutations within the creation yeah, wait, it was, but these mutations arise specifically from the way the DNA itself is structured, that these mutations arise from the fact that three billion nucleotide pairs need to be replicated every single time a cell divides, which makes the formation of cancer inevitable. There are cancer cells in me, cancer cells in you, cancer cells in everybody because mm -hmm. of the way that our cells are, are uh, structured. Yeah, and I would say that's that's because of sin, right? Because oh wait, so then why do we have dinosaur bones with cancer? Um, probably because they were here with us right in the beginning when, when sin and all prove that it. happened. Prove it. Prove it. Yeah, prove it. Um. Okay, so there's actually no way to prove that right because we can't go back that far <laughs> yeah but there's a way to disprove that which is just by the radio carbon or the the radiometric dating of these bones that we know the oldest human is like two hundred thousand years old uh whereas dinosaurs with cancer lived 66 million years ago it's around 66 million years before humans existed yeah i would just reject that <laughs> Oh, which part? Wait, wait, wait. So I'll, I'll lay out the process to you and you tell me which step you reject. Uh, so we gather these zircon crystals which form in the absence of lead, but they do form with uranium. So we just compare the ratio of uranium to the ratio of the lead that it's decomposed into or that it's decayed into. Uh, and then from that, we can calculate how old these fossils are. So um, which step of that do you reject? Go ahead. Um, the, I'm just gonna reject the whole thing. Right. I'm yeah, gotcha. Thinking. Wait, wait, wait. So let's 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 start with the let's start with the first step that uh, that zircon crystals form in the absence of lead. What's your evidence that zircon crystals form with lead? I don't have any evidence for that. Gotcha. Perfect. So so you'll concede to that one. Moving on to the next one. No, um, not at all. I just don't believe it. Oh, oh, I gotcha. Just, wait, so you just, wait, so, so, so to be clear, your beliefs are based not on evidence, but based on a Bronze Age fairy tale that you need to be true. 
No, I just don't believe that we can actually use these methods to date things that far back. I just Wait, don't could you could you summarize the method to me if you're so confident that it doesn't work? Could you summarize the method? You said the absence of lead forms on uh, something crystals. Do you do you even know what the name of the method is? The name of the specific method that I just described to you. Do you know Do you know the name of that? No. Uh, what is that? Uh, oh, gotcha. Wait. So how are you going to discredit a method the name whose is, name you don't even know? Right? Yeah, it uses uh, radiometric dating. Yeah, so I have a, I have like a, a small understanding of, of these methodologies, you know, and stuff like that. But gotcha. I with your small with understanding, why do you think you know better than every scientist? Well, because I think a lot of scientists, right? I think it's something like only like forty percent or something like that believe in some form of deity. Even less believe in specifically the christian god right so if more than half of scientists don't believe in god they're already off to the wrong start gotcha wait so you think that they just inject their atheism into everything you think that they're doing this because Absolutely. they want to I disprove think their god position is that god isn't real do you have any evidence that this is why they do the research that they do that they wouldn't arise at, arrive at the exact same conclusions otherwise well i think it's a natural um it would be a natural phenomenon, right, for a scientist who already doesn't hold a belief in God to conduct his research with with that um, ideology in mind. Yeah, so all research is done secularly. Uh, no research should be done from the standpoint of a particular religious belief, including atheism. All that matters is the methodology. Uh, so do you have a critique of the methodology itself of uranium-led dating? Yeah, I just don't I just don't think it's possible for that for that dating to actually date things six million years ago. Why not? Seven million, eight million years ago. Why not? I just don't I just don't think it's actually possible, right? I think they can Why say not? it's possible. Right, but I think if our government lies wait, 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 wait. about certain I don't, things, I don't, no, nobody nobody cares about the conspiracy. Why is it not possible? Kai, thank you so much for the subscription. Appreciate it. I can't, I can't explain, I can't myself explain why. Then how do you know, wait, so then why should anyone respect your opinion when you're throwing out, I can explain very clearly, very easily to you why it is possible, and you have no explanation of why it's not possible. So why should anyone on this entire planet take your explanation over mine? Because just because you can explain something doesn't mean it's actually right. But you can explain step by step. Uh, you have no critiques of the step by step explanation. Right, because even if you have a process that you can explain, right, you can explain the whole process, doesn't mean that it's actually right, doesn't mean that it's actually true, doesn't mean it's actually useful. So, can you, would you mind rejecting a step in the step by step thing that I gave you? Well, like I said, I would just reject the whole thing. <laughs> wait, wait, would you reject every step? Um. Yeah, if I'm rejecting the whole thing, I'm rejecting every step. Gotcha. Wait. So then, uh, give me the source that says that zircon crystals form with lead. No, I don't have a source for that. I can't. I can't give. Gotcha. Wait. Wait. That. So, so you have. So you're rejecting it. And what's your foundation for rejecting that zircon crystals form without lead? What's the What's the basis for that? What's my basis for that? Yeah, for saying that zircon crystals form with lead in them. What's your basis for saying that zircon crystals form with lead in them? Well, I'm not. I'm not making that claim, right? Like, even you, if they you are, because that was the first step, and you're rejecting all the steps. So you're rejecting that step because you reject all the steps. So I'll ask you again: What's the basis for saying that rejecting... zircon crystals form with without lead? Because I'm rejecting that just this method can be used to date things that far back. I just don't think it's possible, right? Yeah. Wait, like, what's it... the what's the half life of uranium two thirty eight? No idea, buddy. <laughs> uh, Four point five billion years. Yeah, so I, I just really don't, I just don't think it's possible. Oh, okay, wait, so uh, if we know what that, the half-life of uranium is, and we, we know that, we know the half-life of all of these elements, then why are we not capable of dating it this far back? How do we know the half-life of these elements? That's just, it just comes down to mathematical formulas related to... Um, I think just like their chemical composition. So it comes down to a mathematical equation that says this thing takes this long to form. 
uh no not to well not to form takes this long for half of the sample uh wait do you even know what a half-life is a half-life the half of the span of something wait wait what do you think a half-life is in relation to you you truly know nothing about this how, how not, wait, can, you, can you explain can you explain yeah wait so then why wouldn't you listen to the people who are because again if these people already don't believe in god right and they're part of our government and our government lies to us about things there's other things they would you know also lie to us about right yeah, so there's no so reason, as opposed there's to, no your reason book. to actually trust this authority yeah as opposed to your book which says that the earth is flat and that unicorns exist my book doesn't say the earth is flat yeah it does in and job it does yeah, yeah what yeah what does it say that what verses does? It, uh 38 14 it says that the earth is shaped like clay under the seal yeah that doesn't mean it's flat do you know what clay under the seal looks like have you ever seen like a like a seal on the back of a letter yeah yeah that's what it means when it says clay underneath the seal yeah but you can also mold clay into a sphere yeah but what is what does clay look like under one of those seals that you put on onto uh letters what does, does it, it look like does it mean does it mean a, a, uh, a seal of that kind though yes it does i don't think so yes the, the seal can correct just... that is that is literally the word that is used in the verse yes yeah but again the seal doesn't have to be like a stamp it could literally just it li be... yeah that is literally the word <laughs> seal doesn't mean stamp it does, it yes, it does. Stamp. Yes, this this word in this context does. Yes. How do you know? You read that. You read. You it can. We you... can literally just go and and look at the original language. Is this is this the New Testament or the Old Testament? What, what verse did you say? Um. This is the. Uh, the Old Testament, I believe. So. Uh, Job, Job 38, 14, uh, Hebrew. Yeah, it's the, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. So uh, a signet, a, a, the word literally means uh, signet. It means like like uh, one of those signing rings, like you, like the thing that you press into to leave the mark on like wax, for example. That is that is quite literally what the word translates to. It's not ambiguous. This isn't like something that's up for discussion. Uh, this is just very clearly uh, it saying that the earth is is flat. Yeah, so is that, is that speaking literally or? What's the metaphor? That, that the earth is under God's, um, like dominion per se. Oh, and why is, uh, why is a seal metaphorical for, uh, dominion? Silence. You're mute. I don't know if you know that you're muted. Damn. When your book gets torn in half and all you can say is, it's just a metaphor. It's just a metaphor. Saint, if you're off the app, you need to return to the app for me to hear you. Uh, unless, of course, you're running, uh, which we'll find out very soon. Hey, Saint, do you have an answer? Do you want to stay muted up? Yeah, one second. <laughs> Still trying to think of an answer? That's so sad. Wow, are you really, are you looking into, are you looking up like gotquestions.com? You look at, you trying to find like a cliff video? Bro's entering it into chat GPT. Oh, 
All right. Well, I'm probably just going to go on, go on to the next one. Um, if you're in, enjoying the debate so far, make sure you're dropping that follow. If you want to support the stream, the Venmo's allegedly dash Ian and the cash app is just allegedly Ian. Uh, both of them are in my bio. I appreciate any and all support. It allows me to go live for longer every single day. Um, if you make sure you're double tapping on that screen, let's get all the way up to 50 K likes. That's just like, you know, 20 likes from each of you. We got this, we can do this, share it with your friends, do all that good stuff. Um, and if you're in that guest request box, make sure that you believe in the God of the Bible, Torah, or Quran, that you're 18 or older, and that you have an argument, which does not involve personal experience. Um, if you want to join the community, as many already have, you want to go play bingo in the community, there's a link to the Discord in my bio. Uh, nothing would make me happier than seeing you there. Uh, and with that, we can go to the very next guest. Um, hey, what's up, Pozico and Trickster? Hey, bro, this isn't going to help you fill your void, Ian. Switch oh, it up, bro. You bros. sound, you sound uh, pretty young. I'm so going to move on to the next one. Uh, but of course it helps me fill my void. I love getting like dopamine and serotonin from these like interactions. Hey, what's up? Hey. How's it going? Al Alia, Hi. Alia? I'm not a fetus. I sound like a fetus. I was born in 2000 though. 2000? Yes. Gotcha. Wait, how old were you when 9-11 happened? One. Okay. Okay, fine. I um, just need you to debunk something for me. Yeah, go for it. Can you debunk the like whole argument that the Bible is homophobic? Uh, Honestly, I don't believe in God, but I need to talk to someone who believes in God, so... I don't believe in God. I know, but I need to talk to you so that I can argue with somebody who does believe in God. Oh, that the Bible is homophobic? Um, the Bible is homophobic, they but keep God's... They that one verse, but I don't know how to explain to them it's written in a completely different... You know? Well, so I think the, the best argument that you have is that the Bible, you shouldn't be using the Bible as like your guidebook for life because the Bible tells you to do just insane, fuck crazy things. It tells you that owning slaves is okay. Uh, it tells you that you can like, like give children the death penalty for the crime of like being lazy. Uh, tells you all of this like fucking nonsense behavior. Tells you that you can like unalive uh, children in many cases tells you, um, like, I don't know. I, I guess those are like great the... arguments. Thank you. I will leave yep. you alone now. All right. Appreciate you coming on up Have here. A good day. Bye. Yep. You as well. With that, we'll go to the very next guest, but keep on double tapping on that screen, sharing it uh, with your friends. Um, as we go on to the very next guest. Fuck why is it okay no we're chilling we're chilling we're chilling um yeah if you're in that guest request box make sure that you're 18 or older that you believe in the god of the bible torah or quran and you have an argument which does not involve personal experience if you don't meet those criteria i'm not going to talk to you um it was hey what's up How, how's it going brock be in there and then all of a sudden like I just went on Josie for a long time. Oh no, Brock is uh, engaging in some some water cooler banter. Don't want to eavesdrop. Sorry, it's taken so long to get one. Hopefully, we'll get one soon. What's up, Abe? How's it hey, going? Hey, what's up? How you doing? Doing well. How old are you? Pretty good. Um, so I I just have some questions about like when you said before that. Um, how do I put it here? So Wait, can I can I just ask what religion you are? I'm I'm Christian. Okay, I'm not gotcha, necessarily yeah. denominational. I'm just a non-denominational Christian. So like, yep, go for I, it. Yeah. Okay. So before you said that, um, what was it? That wa outer space was water. Uh, yeah, right? it says that in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, what it says is, hold on. So God says that in the Bible. Uh, outer space is separate, or not outer space, the heavens are separate um, from outer space, right? Well, it says that, that uh, the thing above the sky is water. No, it, it says in the heavens it's water, above the heavens. Well, no, no, because so what the verse says is that God separated water from water with a vault called sky, okay. uh, which implies that so it was at first all water, and then uh, there was this huge vault erected, uh, called yep. sky so the thing above the sky is water so outer space is water 
Okay, so wait, can you repeat that? I'm I'm just trying to understand. Like, yeah. So what it says in Genesis, well, I think one six, is that yeah, God separated three, yeah. water from water. Uh, he erected uh, a vault called sky. So everything at first was like it was all water, and then he raised up this vault to separate the waters from the waters, the waters uh, below the vault from the waters above the vault. So this implies that the thing above the sky is water. That outer space is water. Yeah, so uh, by sky, he actually means the sky is the outer space, I'm pretty sure. and um, That's just not true. So, like, how can you prove that that is not true? The, the the, sky so, the, the sky is, like, when we talk about the sky, we're just talking about, like, the, the area above us. People distinguish between uh, outer space and, and, and uh, like, the sky. When I say look up at the sky, I'm not saying look up into space. That's silly. Yeah, but when you when you do something like astrology, you can look up into the sky and you see the um, planets and stuff, right? Or stars. Yeah, I mean, I I love astrology, uh, but I'm just not sure what bearing that has here. I think what you're referring to is is astronomy, um, and that's just so you you would you would be uh, looking up at the sky, but people still nevertheless like we can just get a definition here for what people mean when they say sky. Yeah. So it. So biblically, what, what I mean when I say sky is, so in, in Psalms chapter 19, it tells me that uh, the heavens declare the glory of God and the skies proclaim the work of his hands. So like when it says the heavens declare the glory of God, you can't see the heavens, but you can see the sky. Right. Wait, so uh, it says the region of the, so sky is the region of the atmosphere uh, and outer space seen from the earth. So it's referring specifically to the parts of our atmosphere that we can see. So it's saying that the thing outside of our atmosphere is water. Yes, because we're not in the same dimension as God is, or same atmosphere, if you if you would like to put it. So what? God, God is way above us. He's he's above the heavens. He's above he's above the skies. Or he's not, he's not above the heavens. He's in the heavens, but he's above the sky. So you actually can't you like you can't see God when you look up to the sky, right? Well, I mean that's because he's not real. But okay, so that, that's your belief, and I respect that one hundred percent. But from my beliefs and what the Bible actually tells me is that. Hold on, one second. Okay, so like above the skies is the heavens and the heavens are above the skies. So you can't see the, the heavens. You know what I mean? Like when I look up, is, I see, are the heavens a physical place? Well, they're, they're more of a spiritual place. So it's, 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 it's where your soul goes because you can't like physically, I can touch my phone right now. My soul is different than my flesh. Yeah. Wait, so that's, that's nice. So what you're actually saying is that this verse is a metaphor. Yeah, the Bible speaks metaphorically. Oh, perfect. Wait, so then how do you know that? Uh, how do you know whether a verse is metaphorical or literal? Uh, because right here, when it's that's <laughs> that's a really hard question to answer, and it's fairly counterintuitive. Just because the Bible, since it, I mean, and I, I get your argument because it does speak metaphorically. But the same thing is like when you read the Bible, you can. It's really easy to interpret things metaphorically and read them literally. Right, and right now in Psalm, it actually seems like it's a literal verse. It doesn't always speak metaphorically. It, it sometimes. Wait, does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I understand that, but the the burden that you now have to bear is like, how do you know when it's speaking in which? Uh it's it's really just by the Holy Spirit. What the Holy Got, Spirit oh, vibes. It. Gotcha. So you just vibes your way through it. Yeah. Well, the vibes and the Holy Spirit are different because the Holy Spirit lives in your soul, and vibes are just outer. Um, influences wait so how do i know whether a verse is metaphorical or literal the holy spirit will tell you uh i mean it doesn't i uh, would you want to do you want to pray to the holy spirit see if we get a reply your soul would tell you i mean if you're a true believer you would i and i get that you're not a believer so like it's it's hard for you to understand this but and obviously you told me not to come in with personal experiences so i'm not really like gonna go that far into like personal experiences you know what i mean but like um what it tells me is that I can read this here right right now and just read that it means the heavens declare the glory of God, God and the skies proclaim the words work of his hands. Yeah, but wait, so so just like restating your conclusion isn't going to help you. What you're currently trying to give an account for is how you know if a verse or like how I, I, I can know whether a verse is metaphorical or literal. And again, it seems like it's just coming back to vibes. I mean, it's 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 really hard to answer that because when you're saying it's coming back to vibes, like it's we both know that like vibes mean like you i know what you think it means because I, I was i was an atheist before i was was christian i didn't believe in god i didn't really care about god but 
Um, and again, personal experience, so I don't want to get into that. But like, how do I put it? It's really hard to to like answer answer that answer that question like alone, but right? because like vibes are like some people think it's vibes, some people think it's the Holy Spirit. But from my beliefs and what the Bible tells me is that this verse right here in Psalm nineteen is literal. And oh, okay, well that's nice. So, like, how can I? Is it is it just based on a feeling? Does the Holy Spirit actually like whisper words into your ear? Do you get like a little message, uh, or is it just a feeling that you get? So when you read the Bible, it it's not a feeling. It's when when you read it and you use common sense. It's it's more of like a. So it's like, an, it's an intuition. Yeah. So you just intuit it. Fairly, and that's why I say it's counterintuitive because so it's what vibes. You believe is... So so then it's so then it's vibes. What you what you base off of meta like when you read the Bible, when you determine that something's literal or something's metaphorical, it's based on vibes. It's more if you're just intuiting it, if you're just using common sense, then you're literally just appealing to the vibes. Well, what do you consider to be vibes? Because belief and vibes are two different things. Just based on like like intuiting something with no real hard evidence to it. I mean, there is evidence that the sky is real. Like the, you, when you look up, you see the sky. Yeah. And then when you look up, you can't see the heavens. So hold on. I have another. Oh, so oh here. oh. So this actually puts you in a much worse place. So you're oh. saying that the way you you determine whether something is metaphorical or literal is just whether it conforms to reality. So all the stuff that hasn't been disproven, that's all literal. But all the stuff that has been disproven, oh geez, well that that was just a metaphor. It was just a metaphor the entire time. So it's just ad hoc. I mean, well. Right now, we're talking about the skies in heaven. We're not really talking about any other any other things in the Bible. But, but I'm asking you about how you know any of this. Matthew, thank you so much for the $6.66 on Venmo. Uh, all hail vibes. Thank you so much for funding my blasphemy. W Matthew and W666 in that comment section. I appreciate that. Okay. So in Colossians uh, chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, it also says, For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and, unvisible, and invisible. So where you can see and you can't see it. It's so like the heavens and earth. You can't see the heavens, but you can't see the earth. And it's pretty easy to interpret that through, not even through the Holy Spirit. If anybody that reads that would be able to interpret it. <clears throat> That's like super nice. Wait, so, I mean, I don't believe in the Bible, but do you have any evidence for it? I mean, the sky, you can see the sky. And it tells you you can see the sky, but you can't see the heavens. Oh, okay, wait. So if I, if I wrote a book that said that, like, you can see the sky, but you can't see, like, Casper the Friendly Ghost, but Casper the Friendly Ghost still exists, would you take that as evidence that Casper the Friendly Ghost exists? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, because, because you can't, I mean, okay. Okay, science, buddy. at the same okay. thing, at the same time, science can't prove that those people exist either, right? Which people? God or like Casper the Friendly Ghost, like you said? Yeah, it's not a scientific question. How it's is more it like a philosophical question. Well, I feel like science can describe most of the things in the, on the earth, it right? It can describe phenomena that is like physical. Science doesn't describe like metaphysical or supernatural yeah, it doesn't phenomena. It describe spiritual phenomena? It doesn't, no. Okay. I mean, that's, that's I mean, and that's kind of like where, where our ways like counterpart, you know what I mean? Like, well, but then it's, it's philosophy time, right? Like, I don't, my, my entire epistemology isn't just science. Uh, it's also philosophy. It's also philosophy, exactly. Yeah, I so I have that. lots of philosophical arguments for why we know that God isn't real. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Um, I mean, going back to like the basics of it, do you, doesn't science say something can't come from nothing? Uh, no. So how was the earth created? And like, how, how did this get here? So the earth came about via, or do, when you say earth, do you actually mean universe? Well, this realm, this universe. Oh, okay. So uh, all the evidence that, or I think the, the majority of the scientific evidence, well, the, there's no consensus in it. The view that I defend is that the universe has always existed. Okay. So it's, it's, it's an eternal universe. Uh, uh, basically, yeah, yeah. Depending on what you mean by eternal, but yeah. Okay. So that's where it's really hard to like, how do I... Okay, so we're, right now we're in we're in we're in the time zone, right? We're like we we go from like twelve o'clock, twelve a.m. to twelve p.m., right? Or like twelve p.m. twelve a.m. You know what I mean? Yeah. And God right now isn't an, if if this universe were eternal, we wouldn't have time. I don't believe because and just listen to this because God is eternal. He doesn't have time. He can see what happens. And this is my belief and it's personal experience, so it may not um, 
be the right thing to say in this situation, but um, he's eternal, so he sees whatever happens after us, he sees whatever happens like before us, and he can like literally change anything. But because of that, when he created the earth and when he created everything down here in this realm, even like the planets and stuff, just like he created the planets to show his glory, to show how 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 perfect he is, and that we can only live on earth and no other planets because um how like how perfect he is. And that's why I you know what point I'm trying to get to here, but um as I was no, saying, not at all. Uh, Kathy, thank you so much for the $6.66 on Cash App. Thank you so much for funding my blasphemy. Big W, Kathy. Big W666 in that comment section. Appreciate that, Kathy. Um, uh, no, so what I mean when I say that, uh, that the universe is eternal is not that the universe is timeless, but rather that time has always existed. Yeah, okay. So, time has always existed. So, that, that really just sounds like an eternal eternal time like it sounds like it's eternity yeah well i mean it's you can describe that if by eternity you mean has always existed then yeah time has just always existed okay but there was a there was there was a beginning no right? so mm -hmm. we're living in an eternal earth rather than god living in an eternal heaven and our earth being temporary yeah exactly it's it's simpler right so yeah uh, because your theory is that your theory is that um that we live in a finite universe that was created by uh like a god who has always existed whereas i cut out the the middleman and i just say like the universe has always existed okay so and i that's your argument and i get that 100 so in where you're coming from is that god doesn't exist in that he's not eternal and there is no God, but we're the eternal ones. And this is where I'm coming from. So my point no. of view is that God, God is the eternal one. And we are in a temporary place right now, other than the eternal heavens or the eternal hell. So like God gave us a short amount of time on this earth just to like in flesh to get a glimpse of his perfectness. So if we act in, in, in perform in the ways God wants us to, we can make it to heaven or we'll be sent to hell if we don't give our life to Jesus. And that's what the Bible tells me. So <clears throat> that's a, that's a really nice story. So what's your evidence for that? Jesus's life is my evidence in gotcha. the accounts in the, the eyewitness accounts in the Bible. Oh, because sure, sure, sure. Wait, so you're saying that the Bible is true and you're backing that up with the life of uh, Jesus Christ um, uh, which, which specifically been, related to the eyewitness testimonies. So where can I read about these eyewitness testimonies? In the Bible. Gotcha. So the Bible is true or because the, Quran, the Bible is true. Or you can read about it in the Quran too. I don't believe in that one either. So if you wanted to provide evidence for the Quran. No, no I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that the Quran does speak of Jesus and say that he's a prophet. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. I don't believe in uh, the Quran. So uh, can you tell me why my power strip isn't working? Uh, cause it's not plugged into anything. The plug yeah. It needs to be plugged into something external. Similarly, in order to prove that the Bible is true, you need to cite something external to the Bible. You can't say that the Bible is yeah, true God. because of the God eyewitness extra, testimonies. Extra well, wait, so you're saying that you're saying that God is real because the Bible <laughs> is true and the Bible is true because the Bible is true. And, uh, or so, and then the Bible is true because God is real. So another circular argument, I mean, we can, we can go on and on about this. this I mean, this, this, this well, argument it's, it's right a here. circular it's argument. argument. Like it's not, it's not like going on and on. It's not like we're going in circles. I mean, yeah, it's, cause, it's cause like you're going people, in circles we, and I'm pointing out that you're going in circles. I mean, we, we, we both can't prove that God is real or what? Well, no, don't, well, we don't say that. Cause I, cause I can prove that God isn't real. I just said we both. So, okay. When you say we're going in circles, it really does feel like we're going in circles because both of us can't actually prove anything. No, uh, no, wait, I reject this. I can prove, I can prove that God isn't real very easily. Other than the, the plug thing? Yeah. So, yeah, wait, so um, if, if God exists and he is perfect, then his design for our anatomy would be perfect, but our anatomy is no, not perfect. That's not true. Oh, why decided, is that not true? He decided to limit his power when he created this earth to give us free will. Oh because no! But if it's just like the was perfect. What would the point of living be? The de, no, no, no. You're misunderstanding me. Uh, not the not that like humans themselves are perfect, but rather just our anatomical design is perfect. That God engineered us perfectly. I mean, he he engineers in the image and likeness of God, but not the 100 percent perfectness of God. 
Yeah, wait, wait. So, uh, do you think that it's, would you expect like our DNA to be perfect or like, no, not at all. I would only expect like 15% of it to be perfect. Oh, why? Why? Well, because what, God, a, what a weirdly specific number. Well, cause it's, it's true that, you know, you know, it's 85%, 15%. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. So, so where can I get that verse in the Bible where it says 85% of your DNA is useful and then the other 85% is uh, imperfect or how do you intuit, how do you arrive at 15% exactly? Walk me through that. Okay. So 15% is what science prove, proved, but science is simply the study of God's creation. So. <laughs> okay. So just begging the question again. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, he, thank you so much for the $20 on Venmo. Keep encouraging critical thinking. I appreciate that. Big W, Heath. Heath, I appreciate the fuck out of that. Um, massive W. Appreciate you funding my blasphemy. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I obviously don't accept that. But uh, why would God make, why would God design our anatomy in such a way uh, that creates disorders that cause children to gouge their own eyes out? Why would God do that? Uh because he, he, I mean, when he limited his power, he, he made it so that us in, in, um, sorry, I'm looking at something else right now. Us in, in everybody that lives, like say, say Hitler and, and people like, you know how he killed like blah, blah, blah. And whatever he did with the Nazis and stuff to like all the Jews, pe people can say that's on, that's, that's God's fault. When it, when reality, it's really just because God limited his power and let people do that to to um, discern the difference between good and evil. Uh, do you reject that God creates, that God designed every part of our body? Do I reject that God created and designed every part of our body? No. No, I believe God created every every part of our body. Okay, wait, let me, um, damn, where the fuck is this verse? Um, it's a great-ass verse. And, um, okay, you can go out of it, actually. Uh, is it in, uh, is it in Corinthians? Oops. Damn. Um, Timothy four, maybe. Uh, damn. I just need to, that's fine. There's tons yeah, of verses yeah, of this. Yeah, I'll, I can, like, just, I can just, uh, I can just run, run this one. That's no, that's no problem. Um, uh, if you notice that, I could probably look it up. Uh, um. Oh yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. It's just right here. Uh, it's first Corinthians 12. Let me get you the specific verse. Corinthians 12. Uh, ooh. Okay. Um, Oh yeah. Okay. It's 18. Um, but as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose that God constructed our body exactly the way he wanted to. Do you acknowledge that God created every part of our anatomy down to our cellular anatomy? Oh uh, yeah. The way okay. He so to. then why would give, why would God give people a disorder that causes them to gouge their own eyes out at the age of two? Uh, have you ever heard of the story of Job? the fuck wait 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 so so your defense so god no, no, causes these asking. kids to gouge yes, their own eyes out because god wants to test them no no no. wait go go wait rewind you just you didn't answer my question first of all second. yeah yeah i've heard of the story of job okay uh and then before that what was your claim yeah, why would God design somebody's anatomy uh, such that it creates a disorder that causes them to gouge their own eyes out at the age of two? Where in the Bible does it say that? Other than, well, it well, says that God what? creates their anatomy. Some people's cellular anatomy caused them to gouge their own eyes out at the age of two. It's called uh, lesh syn uh syndrome. So just the verse that we're looking at that says that God arranged your body exactly the way he wanted it to be. So why would God arrange someone's body in the way 
that it causes you to develop this syndrome. Because it shows you that when you gouge your eyes out, you can hear though, right? You can well, I mean, most of these people are completely mentally deficient. Mentally deficient. Actually, no, I think 100% no, of them no, are completely it, it mentally said, deficient. It's so they gouge their eyes out so they can probably hear or smell. They can probably taste something even if they're mentally deficient. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. So why would God create people who gouge their own eyes out? Because the world isn't perfect. So why that's the fuck what, would God... Wait, whoa, wait, wait. But why would God, why would God choose to make these people? Because he wants to show that the world isn't perfect and that there are still imperfections. That's why God limited his power. That's so cruel. Wait, so it's, so God so God created kids who gouged their own eyes out because of a syndrome that they have literally no control over, that they compulsively gouged their own eyes out to prove a point? To send a message? Well, wait, rewind your question. I didn't even hear you. Sorry. So wait, wait. So God creates a syndrome that causes kids to gouge their own eyes out to send a message. Not to send a message to. Sh well, actually, yes, to send a message to show that the world is imperfect and that nobody's. And I can keep on going on and on. About that's this crazy. Wait. Okay. That's um, easy question. Uh, is it good? Do you think this uh, syndrome that causes kids to gouge their own you're, eyes out compulsively is good? You're going to contradict me by saying God is good, blah, blah, blah. And I know, and I know you say that because um, there is good and evil on this earth. And that's why, well, that's why Satan lives on the earth. He doesn't live in heaven. He doesn't live in hell right now. He lives on the earth. So like there's going to be good and bad on the earth because the Holy Spirit still does run the earth, but it's in a lot less people than you would think. Oh, that's super nice. Wait, do you agree? Do you think that this syndrome is a good thing? Uh, no, no. Why would I think oh, anything is a good oh, thing? Oh, gotcha. So then you reject the verse that says... I don't, I don't take any more, but because the Holy Spirit helped me through that, but I, um, that's personal experience. Sorry for bringing that up. Sorry. Uh, gotcha. so, oh, yeah. so then you reject the verse that says that everything God creates is good. Where does it say that? Well, well, so it, it, I don't believe it says... I'll give you the verse. Okay. It says everything God creates is good. That's true. Everything God does create is good, but Satan still roams the earth and Satan can still people, give people diseases. Oh, no, no, no. But this, is, this disease specifically comes from the ways one's cellular anatomy is. If God designs our anatomy, including our cellular anatomy, then that means that God is the one giving these people diseases, that he created these diseases. So all you need to affirm is that the syndromes that cause two-year-old children to compulsively gouge their eyes out are good. I mean, it's just people to gouge their eyes out are good. Uh, First Timothy 4.4 4 is, yeah. for everything God created is good. So <clears throat> for me to say that it's, it's, a, it's a good thing that God gives people diseases is it, it would be really, um, what's the word? I'm kind of blanking right now, but it, it would be really immoral for me to say that. But at the it same time, yeah, but um, he doesn't, he doesn't inflict, I mean, he doesn't give us diseases. He, it's, he um, it's, it, I mean, we're living in a fallen world where sickness is, is like, like the Satan has taken over people and Satan can still like get through D like say when somebody's like, like reproduced, right? Like, say when somebody has sex with somebody, they transmit diseases, blah, blah, blah. And diseases can get into you through the foods that you eat, through the foods that Satan has, has taken over. Like, so God creates perfect. God doesn't create perfect people, but he creates perfect things within people. But that's like when you said 15% of the humans are perfect or 15% of like our DNA is perfect and 85% isn't. Um, <clears throat> Shoot, I Grimlock, thank you so much for the $6.66 on Cash App. Thank you so much for funding my blasphemy, Grimlock. Big W Grimlock in the comments. Hail Grimlock and hail 666. I appreciate that. Um, so do you think God arranges our genetics? Uh, God arranges our genetics. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So if God arranges our genetics, then God arranges for some people to have this syndrome. Well... Yes, but it's also from my belief. I would say it's a test, so we can we can. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I mean it's a test that presents us opportunities for like us us to um, like believe more in God and, and help us restore our, our strength through Him. And do you think even a single parent of a child who has this disorder 
is brought closer to God by the fact that their child compulsively tries to stab their own eyes out? Compulsively tries to stab their own eyes out. Do you think even a single parent thinks that God is great after those experiences? Of course they don't. But when you look at the story of Job, Job stayed loyal and he's the one to heaven. And oh, okay. Wait. So then God gives this unpassable test. Well, it's, it's passable if you put your faith in Jesus. And who the listen, fuck would put their faith in Jesus after something like that? I mean, it's, it's based on personal experience and I wouldn't, I'm, I'm not allowed to talk about personal experience on here, so I couldn't tell you. All right. Well, do you got anything else for me? Um, give me like one minute here. I'm going to look through my notes. I just, so, oh, um, I'm not going to skip straight to that. The earth, well, I'm not going to. Mm. No, I'm just, oh, I'll it here. It was a good conversation with you. Yeah, um, I appreciate you coming on up. I'm still going to marry with my beliefs, but I understand where you're coming from. And Jesus loves you. And yeah, and you might not take it, but yeah. All right, well, we'll thanks for coming on up. Yeah. Make sure you're double tapping on that screen, sharing it with your friends. Let's try to get this live in front of as many people as we possibly can. Uh, make sure you're dropping that follow if you're enjoying these debates. You want to hear all these good arguments. You want to learn something. You want to, uh, yeah. But um, if you're in that guest request box, make sure that you're 18 or older, that you believe in the God of the Bible, Torah, or Quran, and that you have an argument which does not involve personal experience. If you want to support the stream, the Venmo is allegedly dash in and the Cash App just allegedly in both of them are in my bio i appreciate any and all support it allows me to go longer every single day that i stream ethene thank you so much for the six dollars 66 cents for uh for uh don't read this donation out loud uh in quotation marks um but uh make sure you're uh sharing it with your friends doing all that good stuff um uh and with that we can go to the very next guest but if you want to join the community, you want to learn more about philosophy, consider joining the Discord. Um, I notify you every time I go live, so you'll never miss a live because you'll always be notified. What's up, D? How's it going? Hi. Um, what's the like age limit in here? How old are you? Thirteen. What the fuck, bro? Go, D. If you're in here, go go get a book uh, and turn the phone off. Oh, wow. What's up, man? Yeehaw. Thank you so much, 90 Kid. Brett, thank you so much for the $6.66 on Venmo. Thank you so much for funding my blasphemy. Uh, w, Brett, and W666 in that comment section. I appreciate the hell out of that, Brett. Uh, what's up, Judah? How old are you? Uh, 64. Okay. And what religion? Don't have one. Uh oh, I, I do you believe in Jesus? Uh, of course. Not like everybody else, though. I know, Gosh, what, so it, I know mm -hmm. what it is. Gotcha. So your religion is Christian, in case anyone no, asks you. No, no, sir. Just okay. because somebody believes in Jesus doesn't mean they're Christian, because people who believe in Jesus think that he's coming from the sky. Jesus is actually the word of God, which is redemption, which is salvation. That's what that is. Okay. Uh, so what's your strongest argument for the existence of God that does not involve personal experience? My strongest existence for God is that God is real because God is just the free will of your thought. And That's Zeus it. is just like the, the person who throws the lightning bolts and Poseidon is no, just the person no, that, who controls the fake. waves. And Apollo is just the person who drives the chariot across the sky. Just okay. pointing to some phenomena in the world and saying, well, that's God. Is it actually an argument or a defense of the existence so of is God? Is it a phenomenon for you to think? Yeah. Okay. So then that's the phenomenon because God is spirit and spirit is thought. So what I'm, what I'm telling you is that just setting a phenomena in the world isn't actually evidence that God is real. Just it's, pointing it's, at something and saying, look at that thing. That thing is God. Uh, that's not an argument for why God is okay. real. Okay. So, so we, so I got to go by your philosophy, right? So you, you've read and you, you've built up your knowledge on what you've into, correct? So, yeah, my brain got so much more wrinkled after I started reading. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's cool. So 
Then I read too, and it says, "Only a fool asks." Oh, for only the f- only the fool says. Oh, oh, no, it's written. oh it's written. only it's the written. fool says God isn't real. It's oh, written. it's written. that's so insightful. Do you have like a real argument? I got to tell you something. All the stuff that you talk that you're basing your information off of in that very book, it says it's allegory. Which one? I said the book, the, the, the scriptures, it's, it's written that these things are allegory. So how do you know that God's existence isn't just allegory? No, what's it, in, what's it an allegory I, for? The allegory means that these writings are in code. Oh, and how do I, I is I got, there, I got an example is there like a little example. decoding strip at the, at the bottom of each Bible? No, no, like, no. How do you... You know, so, that's very good. You said that because you know, the Bible is probably the only book that you'll ever read that doesn't little have Sandy, a Sandy, thank you so much. That's so awesome. Big W, little Sandy. Appreciate it. Sorry, what was that? Me? No. I said the time. Bible is probably going to be the only book you read that doesn't have a preface. That's you know uh, super that? nice. That's, that's really nice. Uh, what's the evidence that it's true? The, the evidence of it's true is your free will to accept it or not. There's oh, no that's not evidence. You don't have, oh, listen to me, man. You don't have to accept it as true. So that's wait, not, you that's not the thing. The the fact you, that you can either accept Zeus or not accept Zeus isn't correct. evidence that Zeus is real. You can think the way you want. You can think yeah, the you way can, you want. You can think the way you want about Zeus. Right, and I think it's a I think it's a misinterpretation of of what of allegory writings that nobody has the code to. Yeah, what's the allegory okay, writings? I got an example for you. I got an example for you. Do you remember Dr. Seuss? Did you ever read Dr. Seuss? Yeah, I share a birthday with Dr. Seuss, actually. You do? Good for you. I do. What's Green Eggs and Ham's about? It's allegory. Uh, Green Eggs and Ham is about like trying new things. They're your clothes, but it actually was, he was uh, promoting vegan lifestyle. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Okay. That's allegory. Okay. So so listen, the scriptures okay. the scriptures are an allegory and only those who Okay. Only those who have the spirit know these allegories. So like Dude. you got people talking about the Bible and they're going off misinterpretation like actual uh let me let me give you a a, a description. Noah did not build a boat. The yeah. Ark of the Covenant is the information on God. David Please. didn't kill a giant. Samson wasn't a big, strong man walking around with dreadlocks. And Job is you. Do you think, wait, wait, do you think the Ark of the Covenant is the thing that Noah sailed on? No, it's not a boat. Oh, yeah. But do you think... I think you're just confused. No, I think you're do you think, do you think the Do you think the Ark of the Covenant is Noah's Ark? No, Noah's Ark is God's word. It is not a vessel, a boat. You, you understand that the Ark of the Covenant has no relation to Noah, right? That this is just like a separate thing. Bruh. The Ark of the Covenant Look, is like a, I it's like a what, box. Man, I tell you what, you stick to your philosophy because you don't believe and you let me tell you what it really means. Wait, so how about, how about I tell you why your God isn't real and you simmer yeah. down? Yeah, okay. no, I'm not. I'm, look, man, I'm not excited. This is how I talk, bro. Don't tell me to simmer down. This is how I talk. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. Yeah, Wait, yeah. so I'm uh, not upset, man. Quit playing psychological games, man. No, I'm really good at them, so I'm gonna keep on playing. You're not. Them. But You're horrible if, with me. I failed God, on my psych classes. If uh, we can tell, but if God is real uh, and He's good, then why would He give us the anatomy for kids to get cancer? Bro, He didn't do it. You know, there's two gods. There's the God of the earth and the God of heaven. Oh, it's you're me. going to hell. You're but, going to hell. That's well, that's the that's the first God commandment violated. You're going to hell. Super <laughs> hell for you. You're going to turbo hell. You know, hell is just the truth being told to somebody who don't believe. Oh, that's nice. Uh, yeah, I, you're not I mean, going to die. You're not going to die. That's like a that's like a fun metaphor. Listen, or what's your name? What's your name? Oh, uh, my name's Ethan. Ethan, you're not yeah. going to go to hell. You're just going to be shining shoes at the bus station. Oh, do you think that's what I do? 
That's what's going to happen to you. Okay. That's going to be your torment. You're going to be gnashing your teeth and crying because you didn't listen to the word of God. And I'm going to say, shine my shoe. <laughs> Damn, that's a that's a really fun power fantasy. Good for you. Well, everybody's got to have yeah. their fantasy. You got a fantasy. Yeah, we got to we got to we got to have we got to have fantasy. We all have to have our fantasies of humiliating our opponents, <laughs> except for those of us who are normal uh, who don't have those fantasies. You're normal. Uh, yeah, more. I don't. I don't have fant- I don't have weird fantasies about forcing my the people I disagree with to shine my shoes. Well, it's, a, it's not going to be that I disagree with you. You disagree with the power of thought. I don't, I don't know what that means. <laughs> the ultimate power of thought you disagree with. You disagree I, I don't know what that means. Hold Hold on, all of this is just word salad. That, Wait, that's so, what you've been doing. No, this is all word salad. Wait, so do no, you reject? That's what you've, been, you've been doing word salad too. You understand? I'm in an empty house. That's why it sounds like you're losing, okay. huh? Do you... Do you accept the verse in Corinthians, uh, Corinthians 12, uh, 18 that says, but as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose that God designed our anatomy, that God for each individual, God selected their genetics. Do you acknowledge that? It says genetics. It says that God arranged the bodies of every person. Okay. So the body is of Christ, not the body of your body. Oh, it says, but as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose that he designed our anatomy. Correct. It's the body of Christ, not your body. You walk around in. Gotcha. Wait, so did God design our cellular anatomy? Mm, it doesn't say he does because the creation was your mind frame. Wait, so is, is, are we made up of cells? What, you're the science guy. You tell me. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. So did God design these cells? I already told you it does not say. Because so if, what, if God, if God no, designed our anatomy. My answer, okay. Yeah, go for it, it does not say because the creation in which the, that is being spoke of is the creation of your mind frame, not of your physical body. Cause it's written. This isn't about physicality. Oh, there's like lots more verses that support this exact same idea. There's okay, a, go for it. Go yeah, for there's it. a Psalm verse. Uh, you formed my inward parts. You needed me together in my mother's womb. Um, there's, uh, there is, I thought there was another one, but that's fine. I mean, two verses is more than enough. Okay. Uh, just that it's very clear that it's talking about like the body parts themselves. No. That it doesn't say, yeah. it doesn't say you gave me my mind. It says you formed my parts. You made my body. Okay, so what, when you're in your mother's womb, what is that? That's your beginning. That's your creation. That's what that means. I think you're a bit confused Alex, right now. You gotta I know, but you got to understand and slow down and understand. If the book says it's allegory, that means you don't understand what how it do means. You, how do you know if something is allegory or not allegory? Ah, that's a hard, that's the good part. The ones who have the information knows it's allegory. And oh, you, so vibes, you know, based on vibes. No, I know. I know based on spiritual information. So is, is this spiritual information given to you in the form of a feeling and intuition, perhaps? No, it's given to me by the lips from a vessel. Oh, wait. So who tells you? The one selected to come to tell me the revealment. This is a who, revealment. Who are these people? Are, are, they are you talking like priests? Earth? Who are you talking about? Yeah, they are. I'm a priest. You see That's... my name. Oh, I'm I a... mean, I'm a lead good. priest. I know, but listen, man. That's wait, wait, wait. That's wait, 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 wait. That's nice, but uh, who who informs you as to which parts of the Bible are allegorical and which are literal? It's all allegorical. Oh wait, so God isn't real? It's all allegorical. No, because you don't know what God is, so it is allegorical. Well, God God is uh, traditionally taken to be a, a bodiless mind who created everything, who is all good, all knowing, and all powerful. He, he says he has created good and he creates evil. Oh, but of course that's all allegorical, so it's meaningless. No, 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 no. It's not meaningless. You just don't know what it means. If, if the entire thing is an allegory, then it's all meaningless. No, just don't. You just don't know what it means. Like you didn't know what green eggs and hams was. No, I think you. you okay, wait. Also, if you're gonna make green eggs and ham a point, uh, you are wrong about green it eggs and ham. Analogy, it's, not a point. it's not about veganism. It's very clearly about trying something new that you In thought your you mind, wouldn't like. You can think that way. 
I'm not knocking you for that. I'm telling Wait, you, 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 you are you are quite literally wrong about green you know eggs and green ham. Egg stop is. stop you know citing green, green egg eggs is. and ham. You are okay. literally wrong about it. Okay, so let me tell you. Do you know what the green egg is? Yeah, oh yeah. So so the green eggs and green eggs and ham were just meant to act as something foreign and unfamiliar and undesirable to I think Sam I am is the name of the fucking character. Oh, oh yeah, Sam I says, am. like I am Sam I is uh, you know Sam I am. I will never try your green eggs and ham. And then in the end, Sam I am tries the green eggs and ham and realizes that they fucking slap because by trying this new thing, he came to the conclusion that it was good. So if you want to turn this into a competition of who has the better green eggs and ham interpretation, you're just going to be wrong about this one. Bruh, you didn't even know what it was, so quit trying to I, take I off. knew exactly quit what it was. Are you kidding? Bite off me. Are quit you trying kidding? to bite off me, dog. Do you, Come who on, are you baby. trying to? We got, a, we got a gaslighting Gary over here. I'm gaslighting Are you kidding? Gary. I, I told you exactly what Green Eggs and Ham was. No, I told you what the true interpretation of it was that as was well. That was not the true interpretation. You, you, trying something what different. What is Green tell Eggs you and Ham about? Uh, green eggs and ham about it's a classic story about a picky eater uh the name uh, who refuses to try green eggs and ham throughout his book his friends uh sam i am keeps trying to insist that he'd like them uh sam suggests all the different places but his friend keeps refusing uh, okay so who who's more specific on your spectrogram me or you you went general i went specific well, it's not about veganism. Do you think? Wait, wait. wait. Do you it's think? Not uh, about what you say. Either. Do you think? Do you think eggs are vegan? No. The gotcha. Green egg, you got to know what a green egg is. So what did what did green egg mean in Doctor Seuss's time? Because I'm I'm looking at these fucking green eggs. These don't look very vegan. They're avocados. <laughs> that doesn't seem true. Wait, do you oh, think do do I, I, avocados? Vegan, man. I'm do, you do avocados have little white runny parts that are running outside of them? They can if you mix them with something. Can you show me the avocados that have little white? No, like, I eat avocados. That, that, what are, do, you, do you have? Do you have like whites of your avocados, Bruh. Yeah, you can if you mix it with milk. So you're telling me that this like this so so Sam I am put these fucking avocados into a pool of milk and then they stayed like that for the entire fucking book? Have you it's a book, man. What do you want them to do? Cook them. <laughs> it's a book. It's just an analogy. An it's, wait, 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 it's, wait, wait, it's, 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 wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Bro. Is milk vegan? Bro. Is milk vegan? It's no, it can be. You can have almond milk. Oh, so wait, wait, I, just, I just want to get your proposal straight. So these these green eggs are not uh, just an egg analogy for this foreign world, but are actually avocados in almond milk. I mean, if you want to get specific, yeah. How the fuck do you milk an almond? Oh, you don't know. You don't know, and you're a science guy. Yeah. How do you milk an almond? Explain that one to me, atheist. I, I'm an atheist now. Yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> you see, they, calm down. Don't get mad. <laughs> don't run away. No, I'm hey, very man, passionate. Go, I'm very passionate about Google, this. Bro, you can go on Google and YouTube and learn how to milk an avocado. I mean, milk an almond. Haven't you ever heard of almond milk? Yeah, but I'm just, yo, it's a myth. You can't milk no, an it's almond. It's not a myth. Wait, 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 wait. Do, do milk, does milk come out of udders? Yeah, we used to raise goats. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wait. So all milk comes out of udders. Almonds not do all not. Milk. Almonds do not have udders. Therefore, almonds cannot be milked. Yes, you can make almond milk, though. You have already conceded to the point that all milk comes from udders. I know you said all milk comes from udders. I didn't agree with <laughs> Ethan, you. Ethan, fuck you. Whoever I just didn't. gifted me two dollars on Venmo, Ethan, to say the word that I mispronounce, go fuck yourself. <laughs> who are you talking to? Somebody in the chat? Yeah, so, someone who Venmoed me two dollars to say milk. <laughs> you didn't like that? No. God, milk man, you got a pillow. Hot so the point of the matter is that we're getting at is you think that God isn't real and it's okay, but yeah. what you don't know. It's not, it's on, more than okay. It's also true. 
Let me finish my sin. But what you don't know is that you're a God and you don't know what God means. You <laughs> okay. Don't. Ask okay. Me, ask me what God means. Okay. okay. Ask me what God means. Well, that's definitions aren't propositional, so there's really no point. Oh uh, well, see, now you're scared. Wait, wait. So, Deb, wait, 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 wait. Okay. When I say, if I told you that I own a Mustang, am I talking about a horse or a car? Well, of course, probably you could probably it could be either or. It could be either or, right? There's well, no true definition. Horse, you, so, so similarly, similar words don't words don't have true definitions. Words are whatever you mean them to be. So, what I mean when I say that God isn't real, I mean that there is no. Uh, bodiless mind who created everything, who is all powerful, all knowing, and all good. That's what I mean. Whatever you mean by God, if it's different than that, just doesn't matter to me. I'm not concerned about it. Okay, as opposed to what is it to you? Not real. Okay, so that's what I said. It's okay for you to think that way. But what I'm trying to tell you is that you're a God. Okay, uh, I just don't know what that means. It means you're a giver of direction. You're an influencer. But it says you ye are all gods, but you'll die like men because you're giving the wrong direction for people to go. No, I'm giving them the right direction. No, you're not. <laughs> Straight down. Let's all go to hell. <laughs> well, at least you're honest. Most people won't say that. I'm going to give you points for that. And you know what, though, Ethan? Before I let you go, I'm going to tell yeah. you something, man. I'm not going to forget you because you know what? I run across liars Sandy, all the time. Listen to me, man. I'm not going to forget you because I run across liars all the time. At least you are truthful with how you stand. I appreciate you, man. Have a good day. All right. You as well. You as well. I was talking about milking an almond, but wow, that guy was like a... Like, speaking of milk, that guy was like a lol cow. That was crazy. That guy was so funny. Oh, wow. I hope he comes up. I hope he comes up later. Fuck, that was funny. Um, make sure you double tap it on that screen, sharing it with your friends. If you want to support the stream, the <laughs> Alex, go fuck yourself. Milking an almond. Milking an almond. Fuck you. Um, make sure you double tap it on that screen, drop in a follow as well. If you never want to miss a debate in the future. Uh, if you want to, if you're in that guest request box, uh, make sure that you believe in the God of the Bible, Torah, or Quran, that you have an argument which does not involve personal experience, uh, and that you're 18 or older. Um, uh, make sure if you're, if you want to support the stream, the Venmo's allegedly dash in and the cash app is just allegedly, <laughs> I hate all of it. This is so bad. <laughs> I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Daniel, thank you so much for the $6.66 on uh, Cash App. That's so sweet, Daniel. Uh, thank you so much for funding my blasphemy. W, Daniel. W, 666. W, Satan. Hail, Satan. I appreciate that, Daniel. That will go to the very next guest. Fuck. Um, if you want to join the community, there's a link to the Discord in my bio. It's a good one. We talk politics, religion, and philosophy. Consider joining. What's up, Chris? How's it going? Yo. How you doing? Doing well. How old are you? Uh, I'm 21. Okay. And what religion? Uh, Christian. Okay. Uh, what's your strongest argument for the existence of God that does not involve personal experience? So I really, my strongest argument, really, I just had a question. I don't, I don't even know how long our debate will be, but I was just more curious of like, so you're like a, a philosophy guy and stuff. Uh, yeah, it's like a hobby of mine. Cool, cool. So you believe in like Socrates and like philosophers like that, that they like existed? Yeah. Cool. So what makes you believe that they existed? Like what, mm. um, like what evidence do you have for them? Is just yeah, kind of so my, my, my evidence for Socrates, despite the fact that Socrates never wrote anything, we know that Socrates existed because the people from that time period literally everyone from that time period was talking about Socrates and their stories were extremely consistent with each other. Um, uh, he was talked about by, by Plato, by Aristotle, by, by uh, Aristophanes, by Hegesius, literally 
everyone who was writing in Athens at that time was talking about him. He was like a like a niche Athenian micro celebrity. Everyone mentioned him. He was a character in like tons of different stuff. He was alluded to like all the fucking time. Literally everyone talked about him. Um, uh, and they were very consistent in their characterization of him, or at least there were like common elements that were consistent. So we take the common elements to be true. Cool. I didn't know that. Um, so then like when it comes to, so when it comes to God, obviously nobody has seen God. And in the Bible, Jesus says that nobody sees the father except for him. And we won't see the father until heaven. Right. So our evidence for, I guess, God physically, you know, as far as like seeing him would be Jesus. So I guess my argument as far as like that is how, when it comes to like philosophers and having evidence for like them through references and, you know, other people talking about them, how does Jesus kind of differ in that way? Like, do you believe even that he was, do you believe that Jesus was like, even if you don't believe in God, do you believe that like he existed and he was even just like a preacher of God in a sense? Yeah, I think that he was like, I think it was a dude who had like uh, like a cult following. The reason why I don't think that he was like the son of God or specifically, I don't think he resurrected is because none of the historians from the time claim that he resurrected. There is actually only one source that claims that he resurrected uh, and it's the Bible. So of course, like you can't cite the Bible to prove the Bible. You would need to cite something external, but there's no evidence of anything external that would prove that Jesus is the son of God. Hanji, thank you so much. Appreciate that. That's fair. Um, so what about like, I know that, uh, after the resurrection of Christ, which as a Christian, obviously I believe in, uh, yeah, yeah. there were like, on that screen sharing it with your friends doing all that good stuff you think you can bully me for my pronunciation my i've been getting bullied for my pronunciation my whole existence you can't you can't you can't get into my head uh but keep on double tapping on that screen sharing it with your friends yeah i'm back we beat the case we won the case um let's go uh, if you're just joining, Dexter, thank you so much for the five cent subscriptions. I appreciate it. Big W Dexter, welcome to the community. All who received one, that is so, so kind. I appreciate that. Um, welcome in, all you cool quarries. Uh, what happened? Uh, what happened is that we got taken down uh, for things that I probably can't say. So, uh, But we won. We The appeal was approved. Uh, we, we beat the case. There was no... Uh, there were none of none of none of the accusations panned out. Uh, so let's get the first guest on up in here. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Okay. Uh, if you're in that, yeah. Oh, hey, what's can you up? Hear me? How's it going? Yeah. How, how old are you? I'm 20. And what religion? Uh, no religion. Uh, agnostic. Okay. Yeah, so um, what's your argument against uh, agnosticism? Uh, depends on the God. Well, probably just like naturalism, right? That um, the universe is just exactly as it would look if it was naturalistic. Um, that there's no evidence whatsoever for anything supernatural and lots of evidence that supernatural things are impossible and that everything that was once believed to be supernatural uh, was eventually discovered to just be natural. Um, and one of the implications of natural, of course, is that nothing supernatural or of naturalism is that nothing supernatural exists, uh, which means that if the evidentiary case for naturalism is convincing to you, then uh, the evidentiary case for atheism is also convincing to you. Um, when I think of agnosticism, I don't think of anything supernatural. Um, I think more that, I mean, <laughs> this universe existing at all, it's either something always was or something came from nothing. Oh, I think something always was. Something always was. Yeah. So like, why not call that God? Because God specifically refers to a supernatural uh, mind that doesn't have a body attached to it, that created everything that's uh, typically all good, all powerful and all knowing. So uh, we would just take mm. that as as not possible um, if the universe has always existed, that it can't have a creator if it's always existed. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So God is a creator. Okay. Yep. Do you have anything else? 
No, I guess that's all. Yeah. Well, yeah. Appreciate coming on up here. Thank you. Damn. Don't debate very many agnostics, but that was fun. That was fun enough. Uh, but keep on double tapping that screen as we go to the next guest. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Good man. What makes you think that God isn't real? Uh, yeah, the fact that uh, our DNA is such that uh, two-year-olds will, with a specific syndrome, will attempt to compulsively gouge their own eyes out. Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of the Lord is real. Oh, I mean, so is two-year-olds like gouging their I'm own gonna, eyes out? From, from my own testimony, like each living soul has their own given living testimony. Wait, I'm not interested in personal experience. Well, I know he, he, he's real. I know he is real. You know what I mean? There's nothing. You couldn't tell me he's not. I mean, he may not answer all the prayers and all this shit going on in the world, but he is definitely real. Spirit of the Lord he, definitely is real. Yeah, wait. So why would God make it such that uh, people or that... Um, so there's a specific syndrome that arises just out of the way that our cells are structured, our anatomy is structured, which of course is designed by God. So out of the way our cells are designed... There's a syndrome that causes two-year-olds to compulsively attempt to gouge their own eyes out. Yeah, that's not true. I got, I got children. That makes no sense, brother. I got four. Yeah. Children. I got so two then they. Boys. I got two twin boys. That makes no sense. They don't. They do, knock all their eyes out. Do they, they have? Like do I they got have twin boys? I got the okay. total twins. Okay. That do they have Lesh Nyan syndrome? Because if they don't have Lesh Nyan syndrome, then this just simply doesn't apply to them. But some kids do have Lesh Nyan syndrome, and that does people, apply to them. How many people in the world you know that has that? What's the ideal number of two-year-olds who should attempt to, uh, or who should compulsively attempt to gouge their own eyes out? That makes no sense. You sound like if, like you know, pocket or something when you talk like that. You're talking like you ain't got no sense because ain't nobody gouging their eyes on the two years old. That's that is that is literally a thing. That's one of the that is one of the symptoms of this of the syndrome. So that's that's what caused you to say God isn't real. Yeah, the this so that, 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 if that, that, if God that, is real, if the Bible is true, and you look at you look at the world and people doing all kind of crazy stuff every day, bad stuff. Like like right now, right? If God isn't real, hold on, on, hold you on, good, hold right? you on. You're bad running. Bad. You got, got a running good Randy. Good, right? I mean, you got bad and good in the world. So how wait, 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 hold on. Hold on, wait, you you keep on trying to expand the scope because maybe you can respond to something in this expanded scope, but the scope is very the scope is very narrow for a reason. It's because you have no way of accounting for these anatomical evils. Because people are going to do what they want. People have two rights and wrongs. You have a, wait, so, so who chose to have this syndrome? There's all kinds of people, when people put on, they do all kinds of chemicals in the world every day. People do all kinds of crazy stuff. Chemical yeah, but the syndrome would still the syndrome like still happens. Man, man, Wait, actually, man-made chemicals. The syndrome doesn't happen because of chemicals. It happens because of the way our DNA is structured. Specifically, it happens because of these no, things called. No. No, wait, wait, wait! Can you even can you even tell me can you even tell me the name of the syndrome if you're saying no, it doesn't? Can you can you tell me the name of it? I have no idea what you like. I, oh yeah, wait, wait, wait! So how are you going to make a claim about a syndrome whose name you don't even know? Do you have? It's not even no way around the people in the world. Wait, wait, no, no, no! I want to answer the question. How are you going like to make? Wait, wait, wait! Hold on, hold on! Wait, wait, wait! Hold on! I want. Wait, wait! Hold on! I want. Well, hold on! Hold on! Sorry, I want an answer to the question. How are you going to make a claim? about because the cause of a syndrome if you I'm can't even to... tell me the name of that syndrome okay, i'm in a kidney syndrome but i'm still trying to understand why you saying god isn't real over a syndrome that makes no sense why you yeah because because an all good god syndrome and you said you said about cells and all that that makes no sense Give yeah because definition of why you saying he isn't mm -hmm, real it doesn't mm -hmm. make sense to uh, because god designed our cellular anatomy and our cellular anatomy causes this no it's not true which part of that do you reject Everything that you're saying, you got different Gotcha. Wait, wait, wait. So, so that's oh, just um. Out, so the the out, Bible right? verse that I'm sending you is First uh, Corinthians twelve eighteen that says that the God Bible designed speaks, every part of our anatomy, which of course would include our cellular anatomy. The Bible speaks in parables. The Bible was tampered with. Oh, the Bible. The Bible so, so it's all a metaphor. Okay. The Bible speaks in parables. It was tampered with. Gotcha. Wait. So how do you know what's metaphorical and what's literal? You have to figure it out for your own spiritual and your reality. Vibes. You so the vibe. way you tell what's man, metaphorical man and what's literal is by vibes. Man, man you just vibe your way through it. Man wrote the Bible. That's why it speaks in power. Yeah. Wait. So so uh, so if we're just going based off of intuition, why, off of vibes, the vibes debate. of the Bible are that it it's all fake. Be, it will always be a debate because the Bible speaks in parables. Wait. So why would why would God do that? Why why wouldn't God just be a more direct communicator? 
man himself is, is already already does all kind of crazy stuff but the spirit lord exists what question you did die? i just okay, ask you i got a question when you die wait 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 no no i just i, I just asked wait wait i just asked you wait 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 sorry 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 i just asked you a question sorry i did it's a question so do you do you remember don't exist wait 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 hold on all right whatever wait what's your question go for it you can't you can't explain to my god doesn't exist i did multiple no, times that, that's not definition okay. you just got you, you're going on your own assumption you ain't got no proof that he doesn't exist okay okay you know, gotcha you know, gotcha you know, every day right and things gotcha. wait 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 shut the fuck up shut the hell up shut the hell up shut the hell up shut the hell up do you want me to are you interested in me answering the question Go ahead. yeah so uh, that's fine i can give you a simpler argument clearly mine is like too complicated for you too many moving pieces um if god exists then why do we have earthquakes that makes no sense what you're saying you just threw right back at me i asked you a question how you say yeah okay gotcha wait so so premise he's one if exist. god exists exist. then we would have perfect natural day, laws premise he's two we do not he's have perfect day. natural laws conclusion god doesn't exist do you reject premise one or premise two or are we not this listening is you wanna, this, is, this is why you want to read and go premise one or premise two you do you reject premise one or premise two premise one or premise two do you reject premise one or premise two or are you not tracking Premise one or premise two, which one do you reject? It don't make no sense. Do you reject premise one or premise two? It don't make no sense, bro. Do you reject premise one or premise two? Make no sense, brother. Which part of that question is confusing to you? Do you, you so you know how sense. sometimes you agree with stuff? Why would wait, wait, are you, do you, are you aware? So sometimes you agree with stuff. So I'm asking you, and sometimes you do the opposite. You disagree with stuff. So I'm just asking you, which of the two premises that I gave you, premise one or premise two, do you disagree with? What is premise one and what is premise two? What is a premise one is that if God is real, then there is no ultimately bad natural law. Premise two is that there is an ultimately bad natural law, specifically that earthquakes happen. Therefore, God doesn't exist. So there's bad people and good people. What is that? What is wait, 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 wait. Premise one or premise two? Premise one or premise two? Premise one or premise two? What is bad? Premise one or premise two? Or do you reject premise one or premise two? Can you go with the premise stuff. Answer the question straight up. Wait, wait, wait. Do you reject premise one or do you reject premise two? Why you want premise one or premise two? Why you want to answer the question? Because I, I've already asked you a question. You're running for my question. Premise one or premise two? Premise one or premise two? Premise one or premise two? A heart has no color on it. I'm not asking you a question. Which, which, wait, I already asked you a question. I I'll ask you, I'll, I'll answer your question after you answer no my question. So do you reject premise one or do you reject premise two? Which premise do you reject? Brother, it doesn't make sense to me what you're saying. You're not answering my question. You want, okay, you wait, wait. So I give you, I give you, you two statements. You do you, do you disagree with the first statement, which again is that if God is real, then there is no ultimately evil natural law, or do you disagree with the second no, that statement that there that is an ultimately evil okay, natural no, no, law? No, 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 no. Okay, when you want to say one, that doesn't make no sense when you say that. So you're trying to say if God exists, so if there's evil, then God don't exist. That's what you're saying to me? No, not at all. That if there's an ultimately evil natural law. No, there's, not, there's not, just, not just evil, but period. There's no, but there's no not not that just not law. just evil, but period. There's, there's no such thing as that in the world. I never heard of that before. That sounds ridiculous. I never heard of that. Yeah, wait, so do you think I, earthquakes I've never, are... I've never heard of it. They're either bad or they're good people, right? Do you think... Well, we're not talking about people. We're talking about... We're not, we're not, we're not talking, we're not talking about people. We're not, we're not, we're not talking about people. We're talking about earthquakes. No, no, we're not, we're not talking about people. We're talking about earthquakes. No, you're not, you're not, then you're not being realistically. You're just talking to have no one since have something to talk about. We're not talking about. You're not making no sense. You're making no sense, bro. You make no sense. We're not. We're not talking about people. We're talking about earthquakes. Yeah, earthquakes are created by people. Man-made people do have quakes. They got they got Wait, machines so that can do earthquakes. They got machines that can do that right now. Why do we have? Why do we have, we have earthquakes? Before man was born. Why do we have earthquakes before humans existed? They earthquake way before that. Before man you was born. So it's, uh, don't yeah. go. You're talking. You're talking science. Why would God do that? You're talking science. Yeah. Why would God do that? 
Why would God let there be bad, be good people and bad people? They got choices, right? Well, I don't think God's. Wait, so my answer to that question is that God's not real. So he is real. He's not. And if he's you real. would engage with the question, then maybe we make real. some headway. Okay, wait. Let's let's simplify this. Do you think slavery is always bad? You think if I slave you, it would be bad? Yeah. Do you think? Okay. But do you think that so if you enslaved me, that would be bad? Now, now, now. Wait, 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 wait. Yes or yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? What? No what? Yes or no? Is slavery always bad? Yes or no? Slavery is bad for any any culture. Yeah. So why would God say that slavery is okay in Leviticus? No, that's not that. No, man put that in there. Man. Put oh. That in there. Wait, wait, wait. So the Bible contains man, lies. Man, so the yes, wait, wait. Yes. So the yes. wait, wait. So the Bible man contains lies. Bible and powers. Yes. Gotcha. So the Bible contains lies. So I'm not going to believe in it because the Bible contains lies. It's lies. Speaks powers. Speaks powers. And you can go in there. Gotcha. And wait. So why would I? Why would I believe the Bible if it contains lies? Why? Why would I believe something that lies? It speaks powers. Why would I? Why would I believe something that speaks in lies? Man, you literally God, said God, you literally God, said God, that the Bible contains lies. That way they can slave humanity. You believe that the Bible contains lies. Why would I believe something humanity. that has lies in it? Listen, they did have to slave humanity. Yeah, why? Well, it literally says that God said that. Slave humanity. Did have to it says humanity. that. It says that God said that. That's what God said. No, no, God didn't say that. Man said that. Oh wait, do you want to bet? Let's go to Leviticus no, no, twenty-five. No, no. Bible speaks power. Man, man, no, no, no. Man put that in the Bible. That's why we confused to this day. That's why everybody want to run around and, and call this net. Our heart has no color on it. When I look at you, I look at you to help you. I don't look at your um your color, your skin. I look at your heart and soul. So you. That's really nice. Evil. So uh, really Leviticus twenty-five power, one no, says, we're not play the, Bible, the, we know, the, the Lord, Lord spoke, man, spoke to no, Moses no, on no, Mount no, Sinai. No, plenty of lords in this world. He's got plenty of lords. Plenty of the, gods in this world. Lord spoke to Moses on Mount they Sinai. Plenty, they got plenty of Bibles in the world too. Do you they believe? Got more than one Bible. Do you believe? They got more than one Bible. Do you believe? Man wrote the Bible, brother. He speaks in power, so they can slave humanity, slave man. Do you believe you know that the Ten Commandments are real? That's why you have it up there. You know, I'm telling you the truth. That's why you can't judge. Don't judge one thing. How old are you? You probably like 21 years old. You just found out who the hell you are. Now you want to talk about truth. That's why you can make God as real. Go outside, right? And when it gets dark at night, and I guarantee you're going to find a God's real or not. Come on, go outside late night and hang out somewhere. You're going to find a God's real or not. Go somewhere. Go somewhere by yourself. You're going to the cradle. You're going to find a God's real or not. See if you call on somebody. If you see your name, you call on when you get the deep raw shit. Hold on. It's okay. Who you call on you get deep, deep raw shit. The yeah, the Bible speaks in parables, brother. Speaks uh, in parables. It was to help the slave man. Full, now, why do you think when they show you that one uh, part right here, it was a slave man? Full text? How the fuck would but I you want to go on and try to keep telling me about what I don't think? I know I'm talking about. I'm a black man, too. That's nice. So, all so, my uh, and everything. so when you want to talk like that, I'm multicultural. I grew up with I grew up with Caucasian in my family. I grew up in Northeastern College. So you can't even talk about the Bible. It's on the tree power, top, I grew up multicultural. The wind blows the it's cradle like will Bible, rock. Brother, man, when the bow That's breaks, the down. cradle like will fall, and down will come baby like cradle and all. Rock a bye, baby, gently you swing over. The cradle you you mother it. will you sing. Take it from your own self, Sweet is the lullaby the over it's your nest everything. that tenderly sings my baby no to spirit, rest. No from the high no roof no tops me, down to the I sea. Exactly no heart. one's as no dear no as one. baby to me. We little hands, eyes shiny and bright, now sound asleep until morning. Rock a bye. Baby, that's what people say the that they top. I have to go outside when, when they get late night. Blows, the wind blows, the cradle will rock. I don't want to get 10 o'clock at night. The bow breaks, the cradle will fall. And see, down will come baby cradle. And you ain't been nowhere. That's why you talk like that. You ain't, that's why you talk like that. You ain't been, we ain't seen nothing. So you're going to talk crazy and you're going to put a tone like your God isn't real. Don't worry, you know, when you die, where you going when you die? If you ain't real, where you going when you die? We're going to put you in a nice fine box. What kind of box you want to go in? You're going to put your favorite color, too. Which kind of color you want? That's exactly where you going to go. Where you going to go when you die? Do you know? Do you know? 
Don't say shush. I'm asking the question. You don't know where you go when you Nobody knows where they go when yeah, they die. Yeah, yes, you do. Unfortunately, yes, you do. nobody survived down, to brother. relay yes, the message. Brother. You go up or down, brother. You go up or down, brother. Your heart is so. Your Prove soul it. came in. Your soul Prove came it. wrong. Your soul Prove nowhere it. going. That's why you're talking Prove about you Calm down. Wait, wait. Going. You sound really mad right now. Calm down. Your Wait, soul knows where you you're sound, going, brother. Oh, you yes, sound really brother. mad right now. No, I ain't Calm mad. Down. I'm happy to meet you somebody are mad. like you. You, you, haven't, you haven't stopped you talking in the last five minutes. You Just calm down. Like I'm excited to talk to somebody like you. You find a motherfucker. Just take a chill pill, guess. Hey, take a chill pill. Look at take you. You got that goddamn tell me he ain't real. You can't even ask yourself where the hell yeah, you're going. Yeah, wait. They put you in a pine box. A nice pie Wait, box, so a what's your box, a nice pie for whatever the fuck you want? You gonna be in one of those boxes? Let's just calm down else. there, guest. It, it'll be, be okay. No it'll be okay. I promise. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be okay. Night, see if you it's gonna be okay. Breathe in. Go in the right area. Breathe out. Yeah. Breathe in. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Breathe out. Yeah. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. It'll be okay. You made the claim that we either go to heaven or hell. What's your what's your evidence? What's your evidence for that claim? What's your what's your evidence for the claim that we either go to heaven or hell? What's the evidence of that? Just the evidence. Shit, my own experiences. Oh, I'm not interested in personal well, experience. That, so do you have you live. do you yeah, have something outside, verifiable? Outside, do you have verifiable you experiences, yes, or is it all live. unfalsifiable that's nonsense? That's how human beings live, brother. That's how you live. You live in so you, you just do you have do you have any real you evidence, or do you want to keep on having your temper tantrum? You just mad. Do you think don't that I'm the one who sounds mad right now? You sound mad. You don't want to got think? the angel God sign up. Damn, oh, listen, shit. between the know, two of us, I can't be the one who has, or, wait, Lord fuck, Lord damn, Lord damn Lord. I fucked up the line. Between the two of us, I'm already the one who has autism. I can't be the one who's picking up on social cues. You yeah, sound mad as fuck right now. You're fun to talk to. You fun. Yo, I mean, yeah, you could, you'd have the same conversational talk. experience talking to a wall. You fun to talk to. Can you, wait, 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 can you, can you repeat one thing that I said this entire conversation? Your conversation was weird. You sound like a lunatic talking Wait, about. Wait, can you can you repeat one thing that I said this entire conversation? Oh, if you enjoyed you, you the conversation, say you said black people bought slaves, right? Slaves I I never said that. You said no. In the Bible. You said slaves in the Bible, right? Yeah, you there are slaves in the Bible. Right? That's true. And I told you, the, and I told you, man wrote that. That's how you know man wrote that in there. Prove but it. you want to go? Man wrote that in there. Man wrote the Bible. Oh, perfect. It's, so then the Bible's Bible, not credible. It's, so then the, the wait, 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 so then the it so then the Bible's power. not that's they, fine. Listen, they put truth. Uh, if that's true, then the Bible's not credible. Uh, so why would I believe a Bible that's just full of lies? Why would anyone ever do that? I wonder how long it's going to take for him to realize that he's muted, um, or figure out how to unmute. Maybe we have time for like a good game of hangman. Oh uh, wait, what do I? What word do I want to do? You got jokes, little little kid. You little kid. You're mad. Calm down. Just take a deep kid. breath. Take a deep breath. Kid. I accept your surrender. Folded like a chair, scrambled like an omelet, reformatted like a hard drive. Get your ankles absolutely shattered. We got a running Randy over here. Let's get a big baby bottle spam in that chat for this running Randy. Uh, threw a little temper tantrum, probably burned himself out uh, from his temper tantrum. Now it's time for a little nappy. Uh, but luckily, you know, if he just uh, let me sing him the, the, the lullaby... Uh, you would have gotten it sooner, but make sure you're double tap tapping on that screen, sharing it with your friends, doing all that good stuff. Let's try to get this all the way up to 50K likes. Drop a follow as well if you're enjoying the debate so far. If you want to support the stream, the Venmo's allegedly dash Ian. Cash app is just allegedly Ian. Both of them are in my bio, and I appreciate any and all support. Thank you all so, so much as we go to the very next guest. Of course, if you're in that guest request box, make sure that you're 18 or older and that you believe in the God of the Bible, the Torah, or the Quran. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Yo. You are not 18 or older. That's so sad. You gotta be 18 or older. If you're not 18 or older, don't request to join. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Hello. Hey, how old are you? Uh, 30. Okay, and what religion? Christian. Okay, what's your strongest argument for the existence of God that does not involve personal experience? Um, I think I'm just, according to scripture, called to say Christ died for you. Okay, and, what's the evidence that scripture is and true? And if 
you respond to that with a, with a hundred percent doubt. Why I should leave. I believe that that's true? I'm still going, but if you respond to that with some open mindedness towards it, we, I can continue. Of course, that's what my book tells me. Yeah. So, what's the evidence that that's true? I asked you a question, then you asked me a question. Oh, I mean, I'm agnostic to that. I'd certainly, I'm certainly open to the evidence if you can provide some. So, what's the evidence that that's true? Okay, you want evidence. Well, that verse specifically says. Um, I don't know how much I can say on TikTok, but the Jews want signs and the Greeks want a wisdom argument. But I, Paul, preach Christ crucified. So the way I see that is I can't give you signs or wisdom. So you can't give me the evidence. So why would I believe something that has no evidence? That's on you. Okay, um, I'm not going to do that, but why would you want to believe something that has no evidence? Well, it goes to the one that you already outruled me to have, which is a testimony. Okay, uh, so then I can, if you have nothing, then I can just ask you some questions. Uh, why would God command the slaughtering of children in 1 Samuel 15, 3? Uh, first, before we proceed, are you at all open-minded of course, to Christ dying for your sins, rising three days later. Of like course, you, if there's evidence for it. Yeah, definitely. You so truly why think we, it's possible. Uh, I have no evidence that it happened, but there's no logical contradiction entailed by it. Um, I guess to respond to that and maybe many questions you have is, I don't know because of the way I interpret Romans nine. Uh, okay. So is it going to be the same explanation for the slavery verse? Romans nine. Uh, what's Romans nine? Um, we're not to question why God does the way he th does things. How do you know that God is going to put you in heaven rather than sending you straight to hell? I know I'm saved because I believe. I'm sorry. I, that was a dumb question. What's your evidence of Romans nine? What's your evidence that the book of Romans is true? My personal testimony. Oh, gotcha. So do you have anything that I could actually engage in or verify? Um, yeah. Keep asking questions. I'm asking you for evidence. Can I get the evidence? I already gave you the verse, uh, the Jews want signs but I, and the but I want, the, want wisdom, but I, I want the Paul, evidence that the verse is true. I want the evidence that the book is true. I can't. Gotcha. So why would I ever believe something that has no evidence for it? Um, that's up to you. Why would you ever believe something that has no evidence for it? Because I have a testimony. Okay. Um, hmm. If God exists, why do kids die of cancer? Romans 9. Okay. Gotcha. So it's just like the black box that you throw all of the things that make your brain hurt into. Not really my brain hurt. I'm being very uh, spiritually honest. You, you didn't even consider the question for a microsecond. Uh, that's my honest belief. Does God have a justifying reason for it? God is just. So God does have a justifying reason for kids dying of cancer? It's not my, not my place to speak. Okay, we can just go through some premises. Uh, do you agree that God designed our cellular anatomy? Um, yes. Okay. Um, do you agree that our cellular anatomy is the reason why we get cancer? Uh, I'm not too sure how that works now. I can explain the process to you. Uh, so the reason why we get cancer is just because our, uh, every time our cells, uh, reproduce, every time they multiply, um, they need to split apart and, and replicate, 
uh, three billion nucleotide pairs and they fuck up all the time constantly. Uh, so because of this, cells become cancerous cells, which is why there's cancer in me, in you, and, and literally every person there are cancer cells. So do you acknowledge that the reason why cancer exists is because of the way our anatomy is structured, our cellular anatomy is structured? What you're saying sounds pretty um, likely to be scientifically sound. I'd, I'd take your word on that. Okay. Um, so, uh, so then we would agree that God created cancer. Yeah. Okay. And if God creates something, is it good? So I think you're going to go into, is God all powerful? Is God all knowing? And is God all good? No, just so not really. No, just, I just need you to answer the question. If God creates something, is it good? Um, God is all good. But do you, so there's uh first Timothy four, four, I think. Um, uh, for everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected. If it was received with Thanksgiving, excuse me. So do you acknowledge that everything created by God is good or do you reject first Timothy four, four? I accept it. Okay, so uh, everything God created is good. God created cancer. What do we know about cancer in your worldview? It does cause a lot of pain and suffering. But it would also be good under your worldview because God created it. Eventually, the trials and tribulations will be made right. But you do acknowledge that cancer is good on your worldview. It has the transformative power to be good. I, I don't know what the fuck that means, but that's just an absurdity. If you say so. Okay. Well, you got anything else? Uh, I'll be praying for you. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming on up here. Yep. Have a nice day. Yep. You as well. Make sure you're double tapping on that screen, sharing it with your friends, doing all that good stuff. Um, uh, make sure you're dropping a follow as well. If you never want to miss a single uh, debate in the future, make sure you're sharing it with your friends. Drop and drop, double tapping on that screen. Let's try to get all the way up to five or to 50k likes. Um, if you're in that guest request box, make sure that you believe in the God of the Bible, Torah, or Quran. If you don't believe in those, not going to talk to you. Uh, and if you want to support the stream, the Venmo's allegedly dash Ian. Cash App is just allegedly Ian. Both of those are in my bio, and I appreciate any and all support. It allows me to go live for longer every single day. And with that, we'll go to the very next guest. If you want to join the community, there's a link to the Discord in my bio. I'd love to see you there. We talk politics, religion, philosophy. I notify you every time I go live, and we do a book club. So if you want to read more about philosophy, specifically philosophy of religion, uh, consider joining so you learn some stuff. What's up, Seth? Return to the app immediately. Hey, what's up? How old are you? Seth? Okay, on to the next one. Um, but yeah, it's uh, we're reading a paper about... Uh, Christian presuppositional apologetics. So if you're interested in that and the ways to respond to that, then you should join the community. Uh, it's under the reading group tab. We're reading it for next Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. I'd love to see you there. What's up, Abby? How's it going? Hey. Yeah, how, how are you? Doing? doing well. Um, I'm 19. Okay. What religion? <laughs> you tell me I'm like super nervous. Oh my God. That's okay. It's okay. So I'll be nice. Here. Okay. Whew. <laughs> okay. Um, so where do i start um first of all um i i hear like you um asking people questions and um first thing i don't believe in hell and i don't believe everybody goes up to heaven and also you were saying that it does god cause cancer and something about earthquakes i was just coming in about that part but yeah um I I believe, right, um, because Adam and Eve sinned, that's why we grow old, that's why we become sick. It's not necessarily, it's not God's fault that this, hap did this, that this happened, it was because of Adam and Eve. And when Satan in, in heaven was kicked out, he came to earth 
and he cut he's causing all this to happen um all this like bad things and people suffering and stuff this is all satan and um later on after adam and eve in jesus day jesus died he sacrificed his son so that in the future we can live forever happily with no sickness no deaths um we can um live like live forever we'll be able to people who can't walk will be able to walk people who used to have cancer won't have cancer there won't be no natural disasters people who didn't get to see get to um they'll be able to see so that's why we have a hope for a better future and yes the world is going to get worse but it has to get worse before it gets better mm-hmm. gotcha yes, so uh, what what's the evidence that literally any part of that is true oh okay Whew. okay give me one second one second i, I got you i got you um damn it's all in the bible really and mm-hmm. um i oh i i heard you say that wait, wait, wait i'm sorry uh, i'm so sorry what's the evidence that the bible is true oh man dang i wasn't prepared for all this god damn it uh, <laughs> Okay. I should have I should have had my stuff ready before I joined. Well, do you want um, me to move on to the next guest? Otherwise, uh, yeah, but it's, I, it's I up to you. To it's your choice. That, um, that um, what I believe is is that so yes, it was written by man, but God's Holy Spirit kind of like guided them to write it. Like, I I don't know a, a good um example but like maybe like a secretary or something like you like for example like a secretary writes up something and like types it for you but you're telling them what to write basically that's that's what that is and then also i heard that you said that the bible is a lie but um i believe that um most of the religions i don't even believe that they're I feel like they're 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 false religion like some of these religions aren't even like giving god its credit and they're not going by the bible exactly and and also that they make so they make copies of the original and they change it to how they like it then give it out to the other people and then those people change the bible change the bible to how they like it and so that's how there's like different different versions of the bible but those are all not the original version but again like do we have literally any evidence that the bible is true um it's a, it's, it's a lot it's a lot of examples i'll come back though and i'll explain it i'll explain it. i'll come back all right yeah we'll appreciate you coming on up here if you're in that guest request box make sure that you're 18 or older that you believe in the god of the bible torah or quran and that you have an argument which does not involve personal experience also that you're 18 or older uh, key point, but uh, appreciate you coming on up, guest. Hey, what's up, Danny? How's it going? Hey, good. How are you? Doing well. How old are you? I'm definitely old enough. <laughs> okay. 30. And yeah, and what religion? Uh, I am non denominational, but I'm a follower of Christ. Gotcha. So, what's your strongest argument for the existence of God that does not involve personal experience? Thanks, Hex. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> mine would be my strongest argument would be the moral compass. Um, there is undoubtedly a moral a moral standard that we all follow. Um, it goes without saying that killing someone is is against your moral values. It goes without saying that hitting someone because of the color of their skin goes against your moral values. Um, <clears throat> what about what about owning someone? Does that go against values? Yes, it does. And actually, God um, stated that in the Bible, um, talking against um, against slavery and against hurting um, other people and owning other people. So when God said that it's okay for the Israelites to own slaves, what did he mean by that? So slaves back then were indentured servants. They were not the Mm -hmm. slaves that we see now and the slaves of the um, transatlantic slave trade 
which a lot of my ancestors were a part of. Yeah, um, just, let's so, just get clear on definitions. So uh -huh. uh, a slave is a person who is owned as a possession. An indentured servant is somebody um, who is indebted and working for someone else to pay off that debt. Do you agree with those definitions? Uh, correct. Yes. Yeah. So it literally says in Leviticus 25, 44 through 46, that these people are possessions. Uh, there's another verse that talks about indentured servitude, but this indentured servitude isn't for everyone. Um, it's only for the Israelites who are indentured servants who like sell themselves into servitude. Um, for everybody else, these people just get brutal slavery. And uh, what uh, verse are you referring to in Leviticus? 25 44 through 46. Okay. So <clears throat> obviously, well, we can agree that there were slave there was slavery back then, correct? Sure. There was slavery all throughout the history of mankind. Now sure. this there is some there is also uh in Corinthians where uh Paul wrote to the Corinthians that you are to honor your so called master, right? Um so this is where he was speaking to of the people who were considered slaves or indentured servants at that time to not revolt against their masters because this would only cause more death it would only cause uh, more strife amongst them so this if i was someone saying mm, you can put an mlk for instance if i was saying <clears throat> all everyone get together and we're going to murder rape and riot against all white people why would they say that when that will cause more strife, that will cause more death, and that will cause more carnage? Yeah. Um, you would say, honor, honor your masters. However, this is what we're doing to get you out of this position. This is what we're doing to get you um, to be a considered human being, moral. Okay. That's really nice. So we have the verse where God says, you can own slaves. Could you find me the verse, perhaps, where God says, thou shalt not own slaves? Or is that not a verse in the where, Bible? Where is the verse, the verse that says, thou shalt have slaves? Uh, Leviticus 25, 44 through 46. <clears throat> Leviticus 25. Uh, let me see. Just bear with me. All right, 25 through 26. So in, in Leviticus 25, it talks about the Sabbath of the seventh year and the Jubilee of the 50th year. <clears throat> yeah, but what is uh, 44 through 40, or er, yeah, 44 through 46, what does that say? 25 verse 44 through 46? Yeah. Okay, so... <clears throat> um, both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen and that are round about you. Of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids. Moreover, of the children of uh, the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy and of their families that are with you, which they begot in, the land, in your land, and they shall be your possession. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you, to inherit them for possession, they shall be your bondmen forever. For but over your brethren, the children of Israel, you shall now rule one over another with rigor. So this is clearly God talking to his people. You have yep. to understand every single, a lot of the communities surrounding uh, Israel at that time were um, sacrificing their kids, they were drinking blood. They were, <clears throat> yes, they were. <laughs> you, can, okay. you can Google that. You can Google that. Yeah. Um, they were sacrificing their kids. They were drinking blood. They were raping. They were detestable people. So it was, uh, so it was benevolent slavery. What's that? So it was benevolent slavery. Benevolent so so, slavery. so they, they enslaved these people out of the love of their heart. No, no one said that. Oh, they gotcha. Wait, so then... They so enslaved then, these people out of the direction of their God. So just like in wait, wait. wait. So how does that how does that how does that get to the point where slavery enslaving these people is now justified? Well, someone can clear. Someone can also say. Also, what's the source that all these people were doing that? What's the source for that? The source. 
I mean, yeah. you can you can look up. You can look up. Did you do you have a verse for that, or do I have a verse? A verse of what they were doing. Clearly, um, I have to I have to look up the verse, but then they, they have a very uh, specific circ. Um, I'm sorry, a very specific circumstance and example of this when God commanded an Israelite um, be take the Israelites take over Canaan. Yeah. Um, so wait, wait. Uh, so for the crime of sacrificing children, what did God command to be done to the Canaanite children? Yeah, exactly. So, but wait, what, wait, no, 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 not exactly. What did what did God command the Israelites do to the Canaanites for the crime of sacrificing Canaanite children? Actually, no. God commanded that the them destroy the the destroy Canaan and all that lives there. Yeah. So, so yeah, for the kids, crime of Canaan and children, but also we have to understand that if God commanded this, right? Where do you think those children's and their spirits ended up? Oh, well, I don't believe in God, so. Okay, which brings back to the whole point of whether God is real or not. Your moral compass, where do you get your moral compass from? Wait, why are we pivoting, pivoting to tag? Definitely not God. Like, this is crazy. God said it's okay to do slavery. God well, where, said to go slaughter all of these children. Like, and I, and I understand, and I understand and truly... Jesus. Uh -huh. I truly do understand the desire to try to obfuscate and like pivot and shift the burden towards like other people about like where they get their morals from. But the fact of the matter is, is that God said that slavery is okay. Why would I ever want to get my morals from here? But you have to understand that God, when it got, God didn't say, we're talking about, okay, we're talking about a certain time. When is slavery justified? And we can't compare this to the teachings of Christ. Like I said, I follow what, Christ. Which when is, is slavery God, justified? God. When is slavery justified? It's yeah. not, that's what it's not. That's clearly why all the abolitionists and, and everyone that freed the slaves claim to be Christian and follow the works of Christ because Christ didn't have a hatred bone in his body, nor did he have a racist bone in his body. And so so then did, so then God did something unjust by saying <laughs> that slavery is okay. I can't, I can't say what, the creator of everything that's being i cannot judge the creator oh but and then so, maybe we can just maybe we can just like uh philosophize through it so pre premise one mm -hmm. uh slavery is unjust premise two uh god said it's okay to do slavery conclusion god said it's okay to do something unjust that is not that is not the sense so do so, you reject premise one or premise two uh, say the premises again. I'm sorry. Yeah. Premise yeah. one, slavery is unjust. Yeah. Premise two, God said that it's okay to do slavery in this specific time. Therefore, God said that it's okay to do something that's unjust. Unjust. No. Um, I so do you reject I premise one or premise two? I reject. Uh, I believe we reject premise two, if I remember correctly. Which that is God one. said it's okay to do slavery in this oh, time period. One, the one that slavery is unjust. You so you reject that sla so you think that slavery is not necessarily unjust. I I think I believe that slavery is unjust. Okay, so then let's go through the premises one more time. Premise one: slavery is unjust. Yeah. Uh, premise two, uh, God said that it was okay to do slavery at this specific time period. Conclusion, God said it's okay to do something that's unjust. That I see how you're, you're saying it and there's a great logical way of saying it. However, God isn't all logic. So if you okay. were to, if you were to, uh, be in the mind of the creator and how things, because the creator does not see as we see, we're stuck in here and now and the creator is sees from beginning to end. So we cannot fathom with our small brains of what we feel that it was right for God to say or do. And that's what's bringing me to your, to my question is where do you get your moral compass? Where do you understand um, what is right and what is wrong? And that's just me um, really just, just, just um, being curious and asking you. For oh, well, me personally, I get it from my moral intuition, but I do want to point out that you just said that God is illogical. So if God's illogical, if God is contradictory, he's not real. 
Wait, I didn't say, how did I say he's illogical? Because you said that God is like, you can't God, evaluate God with logic. The things that exactly. we can't evaluate with logic, these things have a name, illogical. Yeah, with human logic, yes, we cannot, no. <laughs> so God is illogical to our logic? To our human logic, yes. Gotcha. And but we cannot, we and cannot. What, what other logic do we have access to? Um, everything that's here, over 500 accounts of seeing Christ risen the day he died or after he died, over thousands and thousands of manuscripts. But all um, we have access to is our, is our own logic, correct? Our own logic? Is logic to God different than logic to us? Are the rules different? <clears throat> I'm not hold on ask that one more question one more time I'm are the rules of law are the laws of logic different to God can God do contradictory things no he doesn't do contradictory things then God is within our logic God God is within a it's not within our logic because what we see and what we can understand is nowhere near the vast vastness of what God is. But so does you, God you, follow you, the laws of logic? God, God follows the laws of logic, the laws of um, uh, moral laws as well. And it gives, if you're saying it, if you're saying that God is illogical, you cannot logically know anything about God for sure. And if that's what you're saying, so God is within our human logic. If God follows the laws of logic, mm -hmm. gotcha. So then it's right back to the argument that God commanded some, God said it was okay to do something that's unjust. So would you say that it's, it was unjust to destroy a, um, a world an, an, an evil world with a flood? Uh, I don't think any of that happened, but but even probably even with, the, even with the thousands and thousands of data and and uh, and on and artifacts showing that this that a big flood had to occur at some point in time in the history. Uh, if the flood happened, how did the kangaroos get to Australia? If if the flood happened, how did kangaroos get to Australia? Yeah, uh, during were people were taking them there. Who, when? Well, you say the flood, if you act, if you believe in the flood and there you were believe in the flood, so and there were, well, I'm saying in general, if anyone believes in the flood and there were animals that were put on this ark, correct? And the ark you can see is, uh, go ahead and, and, you know, do your research in Turkey, they have some, what seems to be an ark, uh, on top of, of, I forget what mounting it is. I'm no, sorry, but, they found a, they found like an indent. On, on a mountain exactly, exactly which that's will, not the ark they think it'd be a fossilized ark so the fossilization no can evidence happen. that's there's, an ark fossilized there's fossilization that can be well you have think do you know what the ark was made out of wood yeah it's a very it's a very different type of wood that's not around today oh what type of wood i can't think of the name of it exactly but it's um it's a, it's a, I forgot what it is. I think it's cedar or something like that, but it's a different type of wood that's not really around today. So you're going back to your question of where the, if the, how the kangaroos got to Australia, we obviously had to bring them just like things got here that was not in the U S but uh, that, with, wait, so who brought the kangaroos to Australia? I said, we, we had to have when, uh, I don't know <laughs> throughout history. Just like okay. who, who brought the turtles over here? I think the turtles just swam over here. No, not all of them swam. Can just swarm over here from Galapagos Islands. I think they. I mean, I think that they probably just evolved in places that are close to there. So if something evolves, um, how do you believe that you had you got here? Just curious. Evolution. Okay, what did you evolve from? Lots of things. So there's a mech there's an organism that started and then evolved into a fish and then evolved into a turtle and then evolved to an ape and then you're here. No, definitely not. 
uh, just that there's like a long progression of things that we, if you go back far enough, we share a common ancestor with all the other life on earth, but that's like really far away. And it's like, like a single celled organism is our common ancestor at that point. Um, no, we share a common ancestor more recently with the other great apes, um, like the gorillas, orangutans, uh, chimpanzees, bonobos, etc. We share a common ancestor with this. I think like chimpanzees, we share a common ancestor like six million years ago. Um, but I mean, do you reject that? I do. Okay. So I don't why is our second chromosome a fusion of the 2A and 2B chromosomes that the other great apes have? If we don't share a common ancestor with them? I believe we have, we share similarities. But <laughs> I why would God, and as well as we share similarities in the mindset of a hamster, but that doesn't mean I evolved from a hamster. Yeah, uh, wait, wait. So these are different organisms created <laughs> for different purposes. Um, so no why would else. God make our chromosome this way if making it this way? made it made like a, a substantial part of it useless so typically our chromosomes have these things on the ends of them called telomeres these shorten as we get older like when your telomeres run out that's basically when you die of old age that is so or like it's when your immune system breaks down so for our second chromosome um the 2a and 2b chromosomes fused together at the telomeres which meant that they're vestigial now they're now useless so why would god make our second chromosome that way if it included these completely useless parts of dna um actually i don't have that answer because i'm not okay. god but i will tell you that dna in itself is thousands and thousands of code that and if you look at code today and a computer generated uh, someone you have to look at and say, who created this code? Now, it, it, it's very interesting to me that people can look at DNA, some of the most complex code in the world and say that oh, it just got here. It so, oh, so why is 85% of our DNA completely useless? 85%? Who said that? Uh, this is according to Oxford. Is according to Oxford. So 85% of my DNA is useless. Yes, correct. And you want me to believe that? Yes. That, well, that's just a scientific fact. Yes. That 15% well, science... of your DNA actually does stuff. 85% of it does nothing. I don't believe that. Do you um, want the study? Yeah, you can give me the study and I, I can also send you a few studies as well. Yeah. What's your study that says 100% of our DNA is, is useless or is useful? I didn't, say, I didn't say studies for DNA. I'm talking about studies for other things. Okay. Um, uh, for uh, DNA, 85% uh, and not used. Yeah, I don't, I don't go with that. Uh, this is... Damn, one second. Um, this study is uh, an upper limit on the functional fraction of the human genome. Once again, an upper limit on the functional fraction of the human genome by Dan Grar. It's in the Journal of Genome Biology and Evolution. Uh, and the last line of the abstract, mutational load considerations lead to the conclusion that the functional fraction within the human genome cannot exceed 15%. That 15% of your DNA does stuff. The rest of it is junk DNA, or junk DNA is a bad term, but it's like a, uh, a remnant of a time where it used to do something, or it's uh, like a a sign of mobile like de genes that used to do something but now no longer do um so also if you're off the app i can't hear you but i do i'll read the study again oh, I'm so, sorry. you can hear yeah. Me? Okay. yeah i can hear you now yeah yeah um, i was just saying yeah i'll take definitely take a look into that um yeah I do so feel that with the fallen world as well that we you're have... muffled are you covering your mic can you hear me now yeah okay sorry about that um I was saying also, yeah, so I'll take a look into that. But again, with a fallen world, I do believe that a lot of the potential that we have, we are not able to access and as well as our brain, right? We only use a certain amount of our brain and certain, certain, certain people use more than others, but we have not even fully comprehended 
how our brain fully works. You're shaking your head like that's lie. No, it's <laughs> that's I a was, common myth, but that's not actually true. Um, so, so we know exactly how our brain pers- uh, functions 100 percent. Oh, it's not that we know how it functions 100 percent, but just that we use 100 percent of our brain. Every part of your brain gets used. Yes. But I'm, what I'm saying is that we know 100 percent functionality of it. No, no, no. Wait, wait. So your claim was that we don't use 100 percent of our brain. I'm telling you, we do use 100 percent of our brain. We we where's the claim that's or where's the. um. We use 100 percent of our brain. Uh, this is from MIT. OK. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a common myth. Like I grew up being told that we use like 10 percent of our brain. But I think um, so if you stopped and like just imagined yourself throwing a baseball uh, that this uses that that action alone uses like 60 percent of your DNA or no, of, of your of your brain, not your DNA, your brain. 60 percent of your brain is used just by imagining yourself throwing a baseball. Gotcha. Well, I, there's there are quite a few um research or i'm sorry yeah quite a few researches that uh theology theolo- theologians and or i'm sorry theologians and scientists have come to agree with dna that they cannot scientifically explain the intricacy and the the depth of of dna so therefore leads to a desi- some type of designer or creator of that code do you say that in, in your opinion, do you say that that code, it just got put together over millions of years? Yeah, explicitly. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly how it came about. Yeah. Um, and the, the, yeah, this is exactly what DNA looks like. If you actually delve into our DNA, it's designed so fucking terribly. Um, it's extremely fallible that it relies heavily on certain components so that when mutations happen, these components completely break down. Um, it, fucks up all the time uh, because of just the way that it's designed. It's unreliable uh, that every time your DNA replicates, it needs to create three billion nucleotide pairs, makes mistakes all the time. And it knows it makes mistakes because it literally has a mechanism for trying to find and repair mistakes. But it's not a perfect mechanism because we weren't designed perfectly. Um, so we have all of these mistakes that just riddle our DNA. Uh, and it's also gratuitously complex. Uh, there's regions where it just repeats the same code over and over and over and over and over and over and over over again. There's certain regions where 90% of the DNA is literally just the same sequence over and over and over again. And of course, 85% of our DNA is useless. DNA is designed so badly, it's actually not even funny. I think DNA itself is like, like the killer evidence that we were definitely not intelligently designed because DNA fucking sucks. So you think the amazing um, things that we're able to do and possess, these are things that are, um, that just kind of came about um, in process of elimination. The fact that I'm able to envision something and create it uh, in, in real time to tangible, something tangible, uh, is that just something that just kind of came about or that DNA? Like what, what I'm confused about the question. Can you say it one more time? Yeah. Um, saying basically saying the, uh, my ability to take something out of my head and create it into a tangible product or manifest something into, uh, that I created in my mind visually and seeing it in due time, real time, that this just come from what did this come from is what is my question for you oh evolution yeah the, there's good reasons why you would want to be able to imagine things spatially it helps you evaluate situations and plan okay so you don't think that that encompasses that we we the need to create because we all have a desire to create you're, you're creating right now content we all have a desire and need to to create something or to have a purpose what what do you do you think that evolution brought us to that point where we feel like we need to have a purpose? Um, I think so. Uh, personally, I think that we got too big for our britches. Like we evolved, um, you know, it's not like evolution foresees anything, but uh, we just evolved to a state where we now have all these complex ideas, uh, which gets really 
uh, confusing and there's just a lot of questions that we just can't have answers to. Um, like, is reality real or is it like just figments of my imagination? Because now we can think at like all these like high levels um, that... You, I'm sorry to interrupt. You said if reality is real or is a figment of your imagination, you, the, just like a like a like a like a philosophical question that we mm -hmm. don't really have an answer to. Like we can never like have like a definitive answer to. We can we can we can come up with answers to it, but there's not there's never going to be like a. It's never going to be like a settled and done thing. There's always going to be ways that you can be skeptical about things, uh, and that's yeah. just because we didn't. You know, we evolved, our senses evolved to survive. They didn't answer or they didn't evolve to answer these complex questions. So now we understand ourselves as an individual in a world of individuals. Um, and especially with the current socio political conditions that we live in, um, we have lots of our needs met. So life is no longer about survival. We need to get our dopamine and our serotonin from things other than survival because survival is really easy for humans. We survive very easily. Um, we now it's mm -hmm. life is no longer about eat, sleep, fuck, die. It's about finding meaning in all those things at this exactly. point. Purpose. Exactly. So my, what I was saying, purpose, like there's a purpose for everything, right? There's a purpose for oh, this phone I'm talking to you on. There's a purpose for that microphone that you're, you're speaking into. Um, this, I believe this pur purpose for things and wasn't just randomly designed or randomly picked over million, mil millions and millions of years. I believe purpose, something was created for a purpose. Um, a doorstop is created to hold a door. Um, you know, I don't feel like that thing, anything is not just chance. Everything hasn't just happened just because millions of millions of years we've come this way. Um, okay. When I've asked earlier about your moral values and your compass, you said you get it from your moral, um, excuse me if I'm wrong, moral integrity? Moral intuition. Intuition, okay. Um, and so if I were to come up and slap you in the face, would that be wrong or, or right of me to do so? So, so, I don't think, so I don't think morality is like a property that actions actually have. I think that morality is a property that I perceive them to have in the same way that like we perceive things to be like beautiful, not beautiful. Um, so I don't think it's like an actual property, but I would perceive it to be bad. Yeah, it would be, it would be bad. Why? Because of what? Why do you but, think? Oh, that's bad? just, those are just my preferences. Why, I, okay, I don't so, like it. Oh, you're saying it's, yeah. I mean, it inflicts like pain on me. That's like the feeling <laughs> that I have evolved to avoid. So you're saying it's, you're saying it's objective. Yeah, all morality is subjective, including yours, because your morality is based on God and God is a subject. No, uh, it's not subjective. It, we all can agree that rape. Wait, you're muffled again. <laughs> Sorry, I was saying it's not subjective if we all can agree that raping a three year old is bad. It's not uh, subjective if we all can agree that bombing civilians, over 500 civilians, is bad. And there's a moral standard that we all go by. Innately. Wait, so why would why would God allow like the graping of a three year old? Well, God doesn't intervene in all human kinds and actions. We have free will, and before you and I know a lot of people, you know, they hark on free will, but it's like I can literally go outside right now and hit somebody if I wanted to. Sure. Uh, wait. So does does God? All... So I have questions about free will, actually. Mm -hmm. So does God value our free will to actually succeed in doing these evil things, uh, or does He just value? Um, does he, does he want us to have the free will to actually succeed in doing these things? Uh, or is the thing that he values the free will to attempt to do these things? To do what things? The one, the things I just like, like great, like graping a three-year-old. Does God oh. want us to have the free will to actually succeed? Or does he only care that we have the free will to try? Well, if you, um, if you're, you know, read about God and learn about his character, that's not what he wants us to do. He doesn't want us to rape a three-year-old. He, he values our free will and he will never step in front of your free will because you basically, I would say having a child pretty much. Right. That's so, the way I'm sorry. That's not the question. The question is, does God want, so God wants us to have free will, but by free will, yes. do you mean like 
just that we can like choose to try to do this thing or does god actually value the fact that we succeed in doing these evil things no it would never about he would never value us doing evil oh it's, cool wait so then us. why doesn't god make it the case that nobody can grape a child but if you try to that then like your your you have, parts yeah. just like fall off like if, have, if god only cares about your ability to choose it not your ability to succeed then why doesn't god, god intervene every god. time someone chooses God, but God is a just God and God, God doesn't intervene in everything that humans, humankind does because one thing, okay, so you have free will, right? So your free will, you can choose whatever you want to do with that free will. You have consequences and repercussions of that choice, whether it comes to you now, where it comes to you down the line, where it comes to you in afterlife. Uh, I believe that God does not or uh, condone evil and with free will just like giving it to your son or your daughter you you give them the free will you love them free will is an act of love it's not an, if you, if god was to come down and intervene in every single thing and tell us this is how you do this and this and that and slap us every time we don't do that that's not a loving god that's a dictator so yeah so wait is stopping the grape of a three-year-old just uh yes like i said but god then why doesn't god do it, it? God does not intervene in all of men's happenings. Why not? Wait, like, why Why not for, like, these ones specifically, for the ones that are, like, extremely grotesque? Why not? Well, you know what? I don't know. Just like I said, just like I don't know why God allowed my brother to get hit by a truck when he was eight years old and he's he's using a wheelchair for 30 years. I don't know. I don't have that question for you. Or I have that, don't have the answer for you. Do you think um, sometimes putting people in jail is good? Yes. Do you think that putting people in jail takes away their free will? No, you still have free will within their, within those walls. Gotcha. Wait, so then God could have teleported all of the child rapists into a jail cell as soon as they attempted to grape a child. Yeah. So, but are you going to fault God because of what he decides not to do and what he decides to do? Absolutely. Yeah. Because then God, God could have preserved free will because you still have free will in the jail cell. God could have preserved free will and, and also made it so that no kid gets graped. So God had the power to stop all child grape while still will preserving be. free will, and but he chose not to. But it will so be God time. prefers child grape. No, he doesn't. <laughs> it will be a time where that does not happen and it will be a time where no evil exists. We live in a fallen, broken world now where we want to do what we want to do. And the, the theme song here is I did it my way because that's what we like to do. We like to do things our way. We don't like to step outside and have someone tell us how to live. Because if we actually learn and listen the way that God told us how to live, there would be no kid, child rapes. There would be no murder. Wait, that's there nice. So no what, do you, what do you think my argument is and how do you think this responds to it? Um, I actually, you mean like the overall conversation we had? No, like the thing that I just said, what do you think that argument is and what did what you say respond to it or were you just not listening? Your your argument was why did like, ju like just uh, just now you talking about like why didn't God just dis or um put all the 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 rapists into jail right you said yeah that. why didn't you just like teleport them as soon as they attempted to because that you agree that that would preserve their free will and you agree that that would stop child grape so why would God prefer a world with child grape to a world without child grape why would God prefer because that we chose to be away from God. <laughs> Okay, so why does that mean that? So wait, 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 so then God, you're saying that God doesn't intervene? He does, but God intervenes when God wants to intervene. So you're pretty Why doesn't much God want to, wait, 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 why doesn't God want to stop child grape? So you're, pre, you're pretty much like trying to get me to answer for God and I cannot. So wait, wait, because you just said that chi that God, because, okay, you actually just shot yourself in the foot unbelievably. So you said that God intervenes if he wants to intervene, i.e. every time he intervenes, it's because he wants to. Anytime he doesn't intervene, it's because he didn't want to. So every time a child is successfully graped, it's because God didn't mm. want to fix that. It's because no, God didn't want that to stop. Because if he did want it to stop, mm -hmm. then he would have intervened. But then guess what? There's so wait, wait. I, I, so you agree? God did want that child to get great. No, no. But, oh, wait, but, but, but you said that if he wanted definitely to, then not. he would intervene. Because let me tell you something, Ian, real quick. Just one second. This, this, I, I have a friend, right, that was raped when she was 10 years old. She was repeatedly raped by her cousin. She grew up, right? She's about 30 years old now. And I'll just finish with this. She's about 30 years old now. And what she does is she helps 
countless people, countless people who have been raped or who are homeless or who has considered some type of uh, molestation in their life, me as well. So without her going through that, and it was a horrible time, yes, but without her going through that, she wouldn't have been able to save the countless people who are here now. So, so some of the things that are wait, 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 I just want to be clear. So you're saying that your friend getting raped was for the greater good? <laughs> you're funny, Ian. No, I'm saying that she turned Because you just horrible. talked about all the, like, the good things that stemmed from horrible her. Into something good. That's what I said. She turned something horrible into something good. I didn't say that it was for the greater good. No. Why wouldn't God just stop all these horrible instances? I don't know. I don't know, yeah, but that doesn't stop, that doesn't stop me from believing in him. I had a great time talking to you, though. Honestly. Yep. Well, um, appreciate you coming on up here. Yeah, for sure. Enjoy. Yep. Make sure you're double tapping on that screen, sharing it with your friends. Let's get what time is it? Yep. Let's get all the way up to call it 100K. Uh, share it with your friends. Drop a follow as well if you're enjoying the debate. And with that, we can go to the very next, or actually, if you're in that guest request box, make sure that you're 18 or older, that you believe in the God of the Bible, Torah, or Quran, and you have an argument that does not involve personal experience. Um, uh, if you want to support the stream, the Venmo is allegedly dash Ian, and the cash app is just allegedly Ian. Both of them are in my bio. And with that, we'll go to the very next guest. Um, if you want to join the community, there's a link to the Discord in my bio. Um, I'd love to see you there. What's up? How's it going, Senator? You going to hell, it... nigga? Oh, that's not very Tamir, not very cutesy. Nuh-uh. You gonna go on live? Fuck! God is... Yes! You're stupid, dog. Honestly. What are you <laughs> not believing in God for? Okay. Explain. Explain. Okay. Which Explain, wait, so what, what religion I'm Catholic. are you I'm Catholic. Yeah, okay. So your God doesn't exist because of his unbelievable hatred for children. Uh, what that the he fuck are you talking about? Mauled 42 children with bears in Kings. He called for the full slaughter of the Amalekite kids in First Samuel. Uh, slaughtered the Canaanites. Was that Deuteronomy? He slaughtered the Canaanite children in Deuteronomy. Uh, calls for the death penalty for children in Deuteronomy, uh, Leviticus, and Exodus. Um, uh, so that's whack. I don't know. Why does, why does God hate kids so much? Oh, and oh, oh of course, uh, he says that you should beat your kids in, I think, I think, be, I think, I think kids should be disciplined, you know, and by disciplined, kids, and you I'm mean not like beat? you, like by beat, disciplined, like spankings, do you mean, yeah. Spankings. So those why are, do you, those are 100% why do you, so Half we're talking about, this world need it. Right. So I think it's I think it's interesting that you know you have literally nothing to say about all the dead kids. So instead, I you mean, want to focus on like the claim that beating your kids in is okay. That's fifteen like mm. AD after death. You know, that's fucking. Was it was it I ever wasn't okay? I was alive back then. I have no concept of what happened back then, or what those kids, or what that religion or area did. It's your religion, big dog. And what are you, an atheist or what? Yeah. Muslim? Yeah. All glory to Allah. I accept your surrender. We got a running Randy over here, folded like a chair, scrambled like an omelet, reformatted like a hard drive. Get your ankles absolutely shattered. You will never debate again. If you're in that guest request box, make sure that you're 18 or older, that you believe in the God of the Bible, the Torah, or the Quran, uh, and that you <laughs> and that you uh, have an argument which does not involve personal experience. If you want to support the stream, Benmo's allegedly dash Ian. Cash App is just allegedly Ian. Milk, milked like an almond. Milked like an almond. Um, hey, what's up? How's it going? 1 a.m.? All right, we'll go to the next one. What's up? How's it going? Oh, hey, what's up? oh we got two in here. We got two guests, I think. Oh, yeah, that's fine. But how old are you? Me? I'm uh, 21. Yeah, what religion? Um, I'm actually, so I was born Muslim, but, um, I had some questions about your, like, atheism, if, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, like, a very, it. very calm, like, calm, kind, nice questions. Yeah, go for it. So, like, are you interested in, like, like, physics, science, you know, general relativity, like, quantum theory, like, quantum physics at all? Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. 
Yeah, it's sick, right? Like you learn about like all like the like string theory and like infinite multiverse theory and stuff like that. Yeah. So like in that sense, like, do you believe that there is a sort of oneness with the universe or no? Uh, what do you mean by oneness? So let's just say, so you know how time is relative, which means that it's kind yeah. of like predetermined. Are, are you determinist or no? Uh, it depends how you define those terms. Typic I typically consider myself to be a determinist, yeah. Okay, yeah, me too. So Einstein's relativity would lead one to believe that determinism is like just sensible and makes sense, right? Sure. That would mean that we don't have free will, which means you can't judge us based on like the things that we do wrong or right, right? Uh, yeah, I, I well, not necessarily actually, no. Um, because it depends what your account is, that you can say like, because these actions stemmed from you, because your mind produced these actions, regardless of the fact that you have no control over your mind, um, that like you should be like rehabilitated and you should still make the people who you damaged whole. So you can still have like some level of moral accountability. Well, yeah, definitely here on Earth, yes. But when it comes to like heaven and hell, like I had no control over my birth or any of the factors that went into my development as a human being. Well, you know? I agree so, with this, yeah. Right. I, okay. I think that if if determine, I think Calvinism. You were, you were raised Muslim, so Cal Calvinism is. Uh, do you, would you know what Calvinism is? No, I don't. It's so it's like determinist Christianity. I think Calvinism yeah. is just crazy. Isn't that kind of uh, like? Deism? I think hmm, what is that like deism kind of? No, it's like it's like you go to heaven or hell. Uh, but of course, like determinism is true. So no of course, it's like just determined well, so I whether you of, go to so so of, like God like makes you uh, knowing that you're guaranteed to follow the going to hell path, and then uh, in the end you'll go to hell. So I kind of believe that like heaven and hell exist here on Earth, and that we don't have control. But obviously, like certain people, they're just going to be like doomed to have terrible habits that just lead them to hell on Earth. And then some people are going to be like gifted out of their control, obviously, with great habits because they have a great environment. And then they're going to have absolute heaven on earth, right? Do you think that's true? Certain people uh, are going to maybe, have but maybe lives. like a maybe like a metaphorical sense. I just don't like like for example, children in Africa who are starving all the time for their yeah, entire lives. Yeah, yeah, like and a, like a no metaphorical water. They have no sense. Over that. Sure. And then there's like and then there's like trust fund kids who have no control over that. And let's say that they're disciplined very well. They have they they lead their lives in a good way. They have good discipline. They can actually control their, their what do you say, uh, their wants and needs, and they don't get tempted into bad things. So they can take a really good environment and make it good. So they are just predetermined to have great lives, heaven on earth, if you want to call it that. Yeah, sure, wait, wait, but do you, uh, do you disagree? Otherwise, I might just move on to the next guest. I, I love talking to you, but I, I, most people are only interested right. in debates. So I just wanted to touch base on that. Even with atheists, we can at least come to this like sort of spiritual oneness in the sense that like the whole universe around us loves us in a sense, it's not even real love, obviously, because it's not conscious, but it's just like, you know, we're all in this together kind of thing. Even though we hate each other and you like some people, atheists might hate Muslims and we, like Muslims might hate Christians. We're all in this together. We have no control and it's it's fine. Yeah. It's well, good. I appreciate you coming on up here. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Bye. Yep. All right. Bye bye. On to the next one. But if you want to support the stream, Venmo's allegedly dash Ian cash app is just allegedly Ian. What's up? How's it going, Colts? Yo, what's up, bro? Um, yeah, hold, so hold I'm not you. judgmental at all. I'm not going to judge you on your personal beliefs. And um, I would like to say that most of the bad things that happen in this world is because God's not in charge of this world. This is the devil's kingdom. De the devil's in control of everything, bro. So oh. you're sitting here, why this, why this, why that? It's because God has no control over what happens in this realm. Does God have control over what he commanded the Israelites to do in like first Samuel fifteen three? No. No. It's all yeah, free will. So God had no you, control. You only, like you lose you don't have you no longer have free will once you answer the call. If you're not answering the call, then you have free will. But if you've answered the call, you no longer have free will. So it doesn't matter what you do. Is if you've answered the call, you're not gonna be able to do what you want to mm -hmm. do if that's not in God's plan for you. Wait, wait, I just want to be clear the crazy thing that you just affirmed. So you just said that God had no control over the fact that he told people to go and slaughter the children of a nation they were not at war with, that God had no control over his ability to go and command this atrocity. Couldn't he have just said literally anything else? I mean, like I said, bro, he's not in control. The devil is. Was he in control when he commanded them to go slaughter the Amalekite children? 
it was a different world back then. We're not living in the biblical times anymore. We're living in the end times. This the world is completely different. Okay, that was wait, before wait, Jesus came. That was before Jesus came along and died for all of our sins. Is Everybody Jesus God? Sinful. The price for sin back then was death. Is Jesus God? No, Jesus is the Son of God. Oh, you're going to super hell. That's blasphemy. Saying that Jesus oh. isn't God is like that's like the belief at, that that is like the belief in your religion. I don't, you don't have think a Jesus religion. is God, then you religion. reject. I'm a so wait, wait, so you, I don't go to church. So you reject the Trinity. No, I reject the church. So you reject the Trinity. Like I said, I'm not religious. I'm not a Christian. So I don't. I don't. I don't. You know, it's it's my choice. Okay, I mean, it certainly is your choice. Uh, you that, certainly have the choice. Just because I reject the Trinity doesn't mean that I'm going to hell. Uh, yeah, that's that's certainly true. As long as you think that everyone else is wrong about it, that's fine. Fair, like, fair no, enough, I don't I think guess. everyone else is wrong about it, but I think the church is wrong about it. And I think people in the church have came into the church and deceived the people so many different times in so many different ways. Like, I mean, for instance, the Bible has been altered so many times, it's hard to tell what's actually true. You can't go yeah. based off the Bible. You can't, you can't sit there and say... That oh the, the Bible says this so it actually happened. That doesn't just because the Bible says it doesn't mean it actually happened. You got to realize okay. that God Himself didn't write the Bible. Man did, and man is manipulative, and you okay. know that because you're a gotcha. human, right? Yeah, man is manipulative. Wait, so what's your evidence that Jesus is the Son of God again? He said he's the Son of God. Where? In the Bible. Eric, thank you so much for the $25 on Cash App. Big W, Eric. I appreciate the hell out of that. Thank you so much for funding my blasphemy. That's incredible. Thank you so much, Eric. I love you. Um, the So it's in the Bible, the book that you said we can't trust. Not everything in the Bible we can't trust. There are some things you can trust. There are some things you really got to dig down deep with inside of you to know what's right and what's wrong. How do you know if you can trust it or not? It's inner wisdom, bro. Oh, vibes. So trust, you, you trust just your intuition. So my, my intuition says that this is all nonsense. It talks about unicorns. Yeah, so says if it's the nonsense, then it probably didn't fucking happen. Yeah, I mean, all of it. Like, humans don't revive after three days. That's what my intuition says. Oh, no, but he was the son of God, so it was different. But my intuition doesn't say that he's the son of God. You know, but you know, the power that rose Christ from the dead lives within you. We as humans haven't been able to find that power because we're mortal. He wasn't. He was the Wait, son but that's, of God. That's not what my According intuition miracles. says, though. My intuition just doesn't say that. I mean, look, bro, there's more. Uh, OK, but there's there's plenty of evidence that backs up, backs up all the existence of God, bro. And you're going to yeah, like deny what? it for what? Like what? What's the evidence? Um, I mean, you you afraid to use Ritterberg drying up, everything that's been predicted in the Bible, bro. All the prophecies are unfolding the, before everyone's eyes. It's not that hard to see if you just fucking look. Yeah, so the prophecy is actually impossible to be fulfilled because in the prophecy it's not it impossible, says that, bro. It's happening right now. In the prophecy it says that uh, Jesus says this generation, i.e. Jesus's generation uh, will not come to pass, that Jesus's generation will not pass away until all the prophecies get fulfilled including his return but he didn't return and the generation did pass away so that prophecy isn't true and will never be true well you know what i believe that that judgment day already happened i believe that we are ancestors of people that took the mark of the beast so i mean it really just boils down to what you actually believe i thought we were in the end of days yeah, we're in the end of days. This is our second chance to redeem ourselves, and you're fucking up, man. How many fucking chances do we get? <laughs> well, with a merciful God, which you don't know him because obviously you don't realize he's merciful, so he's giving us a fucking chance, and you're fucking gotcha. your own chance up, brother. Gotcha. Wait, do you, have, do you have any evidence that this is true? Do I have any what? Evidence, evidence. that it's true? Yeah, what's the evidence? Um, I mean, I don't know. Do you believe in astral projection? Fuck no. Okay, then. Well, then our uh, conversation's over. Okay. Yeah, have fun I can't, astral I can't projecting. talk to you any furthermore if you don't believe in that. Okay. I mean, I personally experienced. You, you can you can take my word for it. You, uh, you can not. Do it don't matter to me, you know. But I know what I experienced. Do you believe in crystals? Do I believe in crystals? What yeah. kind of crystals? Like the the rock ones. You talking about the ones that are used for like witchcraft and stuff? Yeah. Do you mm, crystals? They're real. 
I believe they're real, but I don't fuck with them. I've, I've okay. had my own past experiences with them, and the past experiences I've had with them has led me not to fuck with them. Yeah, yeah. You should be careful around crystals. They have bad vibes. Some of them are very powerful. Do you believe in a? Do you believe in like astrology? Not technically, brother. I don't even really believe in the globe. I believe in flat earth and I have my reasons because uh, here a couple years ago, I did. I did believe in the globe, but I've oh. seen a lot more evidence that backs up the flat earth uh, idea more than the globe does because the globe mm. just contradicts, contradicts itself mm -hmm. all the time. Well, you're just saying that because you're, you're a Pisces. I'm a what? You're a Pisces. No, I'm a Taurus. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you do have that, that Taurus energy to you. Yeah. Yeah, but, but you're only all, saying that the earth is you're only saying lady. that the I earth just, is flat because no, you're mean, a Taurus. Just... What? You're only saying that the earth is flat because you're a Taurus. Like, oh, because I'm a Taurus. So yeah. all Tauruses believe that the earth is flat. Every single one of them, yeah. Close world nine 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 is destroying a repetition. Oh, whatever, bro. It, it's whatever, bro. Like I, I went viral on here because of my theories, bro. So I mean, I'm not even sure. Bro. Okay. Okay. Well, appreciate you coming on up. Yep. Here. Grimlock, thank you so much for the six dollars sixty six cents on Cash App. Hail Grimlock. Hail six six six. Hail Satan. Big W Grimlock in that comment section as we go to the very next one. Uh, if you're in that guest request box, make sure that you're 18 or older, you believe in the God of the Bible, Torah, or Quran, and you have an Our argument which does not involve personal experience. What's up? How's it going, more? Hi, my name's Morgan. <laughs> it's just my hey. initial for my business account. Okay. How old? Yeehaw. Thank you so much, Josh. Uh, how old are you? I'm 26. Okay. And what religion? Christian. Okay. What's your strongest argument for the existence of God that does not involve personal experience? Mm. Well, besides personal experience, I think God's real. Okay, why? Uh, faith, I would say just faith and intuition. Okay, my intuition tells me that God's not real, so how do we, how do we figure this out? I mean, you're allowed to believe that. I mean, yeah. as a Christian, you can choose to follow God or you could choose not to. Okay, so, I mean, faith is just like a belief in the absence of evidence. It's pretending to know something that you don't actually know. Correct. Why would I want to pretend to know something that I don't actually know? Because in the end, like, would you rather not have faith in something and end up, I guess, like, in eternal death? Or would you rather just be safe than sorry? Yeah. Thank you so much, Josh. Well, I mean, if I, just because I, like, put my faith in an afterlife doesn't mean that that's going to be true, right? Like, I can, you know, an afterlife where... Um, you know, it's just me and my buddies and we're just like hanging out forever uh, and like everyone gets to go there and it's awesome and there's like a fucking water slide and God's not there because we don't want him there because he's like a judgmental prick. Like this afterlife sounds nice, but just because I think it's nice and even if I put my faith in it, that doesn't mean that it's like true. Right. I mean, that's just in a hypothetical sense, correct? Yeah, but like, so is, I mean, so is your, like yours, like it, it maps on to reality, like equally as much as yours does, just because you want something to be true doesn't mean that it is. Well, when it comes to, you know, Christianity, it's just, it's not hypothetical. You, you just have to prove that Christianity is true. It is true. I mean, God lives in all of us. Uh, I mean, even if I mean, you're not a believer, even if you're not a believer, like you're not a believer, you don't think God's real, but you're here live talking about something that isn't real. Like me personally, yeah. I don't believe in Santa. I don't, I don't think I've talked about Santa or made an argument about Santa like ever. And I'm not going to argue about it. It's just like a, a comparison, but I don't believe Santa's real, but I don't, he's not on my mind. Like even, yeah. like even during, I mean, during Christmas time, yeah, Santa may be on my mind because the pictures are plastered everywhere but i feel like when it comes to god like if you really don't believe in god why is he living in in your present life somebody yeah because he uh he uh he is everywhere in our reality people cite him all the time to make their bad decisions people vote based on god they they pick up this bronze age fairy tale and they inform their voting decision based on this i think religion is a detriment to society also, uh, the claim that God isn't real, that's true. And you should say true things. Yeah, correct. And um, uh, talking about the um, voting, you know, using God and, and religion, I do believe about that. Like religion 
is a bad thing, but Jesus Christ isn't a religion. Jesus Christ is a lifestyle. It is. And that that's just, you know, like my best friend, she's actually atheist. And, you know, she argues about this all the time about it being real or not. And, you know, like it's just it's a lifestyle you like i don't i, I would i you know like i would say yes i'm christian religion wise but like it's because i follow jesus christ but there are people who i believe they vote you know stupidly but also i think that your belief in god should also encourage your votes because for example me like i'm a republican it has more christian values than the democratic party this but, is this is this is bar for bar exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. But I'm not always going to be a Republican. All right, wait, I should have checked some messages. Casey, thank you so much. I forget how much uh, you sent Casey. I think it was five dollars. Casey, thank you so much for the five dollars on Venmo. Big W Casey in the comment section. Uh, who is this person? Yeah, I can do that for you, Michael. Um, Michael, thank you so much for the $7.77 on uh, Cash App. Uh, Jesus is King. Uh, Hail Lord uh, W777. Thank you so much, Michael. W waka waka. <laughs> there you go, Michael. Uh, I feel like I'm, I feel like I just got paid. I feel dirty. Like I just got paid to do a celebrity cameo reading off your vile fucking commands for what I do. Oh. Um, uh, and then the last person, who's the last person? Will, thank you so much for the $6.66 on uh, uh, Cash App. Hail, Will. Hail, 666. Hail, Satan. Big W, Will, in the comment section. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, uh, I think if you vote if Evan, thank you so much for the six dollars sixty six cents on Venmo. Hail Evan, hail six six six, hail Satan, big W Evan. I appreciate that. If you vote for the Republicans because of a Bronze Age fairy tale, uh, that's super evil. That's crazy. Um, that should that that is like just ridiculous to me that somebody would do that. Well, I mean, there like there's Republicans who have horrible political views and there's for Republicans that have good political views. And I feel like you should vote for yourself, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like a lot of people in this age, aside from the religion, they want to vote all of these bad things when it doesn't even concern their own lifestyle. Pete, thank you so much for the six dollars uh, sixty nine cents on Cash App. Uh, thank you so much, Pete. Big W, Pete, in the comment section. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, I totally agree. Like all the anti LGBTQ plus bills that are coming out of Republicans. Yeah, I think it is pretty cruel that they keep on doing this. Like what anti LGBTQ? Like the five hundred anti LGBTQ bills. Can you name one? Yeah, all of the the restrictions on like gender affirming care to adults. Okay, that's one thing, but what about the children? I don't think there should be gender affirming care to children. I think that what a child does, what a transgender child does is between them and their doctor. I don't I know why we think that we know better than the parents. doctors. That should be between them and their parents. Do you think that a kid or that, that a parent has a right to deny their kid life-saving medical treatment? I mean, of course they can give them life-saving medical treatment. But do you think that a parent has the right to deny their child life-saving, potentially life-saving medical treatment? Of course not. Yeah. So that's why, that's why I am opposed to legislating what doctors do with their patients because and these treatments are potentially life-saving life what is gen how is that life-saving for a child because of the massive uh self-unaliving rate among trans youth it's around 43 percent will attempt to take their own life each year um horrifying statistic uh, but the rate drops substantially if they get the treatment that they need I just think that whenever it comes to that, it's much more than your child being worried about what's in between their legs. No, it, well then why does the rate drop so much if they get the treatment? By the time they're done getting treated, they're already teenagers, their hormones have leveled out. Sometimes they're adults. My cousin, she's trans. 
when she was transitioning she was um at the time she was like 16 she feels better about herself now she's a 21 year old woman and she's happy she's healthy but she's clearly she was transitioning as a teenager and she when she was done like she's an adult so of course that went down i remember feeling like crap whenever i was in high school but it had nothing to do with what was in between my legs oh yeah wait so then um but even compared to like the the control group like it's not like 43 percent of high schoolers are attempting to take their own lives but 43 percent of trans people are uh which seems to indicate and especially when this rate goes down after the gender affirming treatment it seems like the gender affirming treatment is quite effective and successful at mitigating these bad outcomes of course that that's one thing but do are they truly happy are they truly mentally there a hundred percent i mean nobody's ever there a hundred percent however i feel like a lot of the lgbtq community has a lot of mental health problems that are unaddressed i uh, well so lots of these mental health problems are going to be caused by the fact that trans people are ostracized from society that uh, people are kicked out of their homes for being trans, that they're harassed in public for being trans, that every time they get pulled over uh, and the cop like, sees something different on their driver's license, they get harassed for being trans. Michael Flowers, thank you so much for the $8.88 on Cash App. Thank you so much, Michael. I was just kidding earlier. I appreciate you. Um, I, that I, I, I this is like all the, all the negative health outcomes associated with being trans. Mm -hmm. Study after study after study after study finds that it's because they're harassed. Yeah. And then I feel like uh, that goes back to, um, you know, trans having their own mental health issues. I feel like also they come from broken homes. Uh, do you have any proof of that? I've, I, I'm literally from a big city where there's a lot of this in the community. And I went to a school that's predominantly like LGBT community. A lot of my friends, closest friends, they came from very broken homes, parents who were very abusive to them, um, fathers who have sexually assaulted, mothers who have also sexually assaulted. And I'm not going to go into too much details because, like I said, I am from a big city and I, ha I do have friends who have experienced this. And this is just I mean, I know you don't want personal experience in this chat, but this is from my personal experience. Uh, this goes along with my trans cousin as well. She yeah, was beat by her father before her transition. He was also very absent. His mother was, her mother was never around. And I feel like the type of lifestyle you grow up with at home determines who you turn out as an adult. Your yeah, that's all. That's all you. horrible. There's no evidence that that's what causes people to be trans. And there's like a double bind here, right? Um, for why I can't accept your personal anecdotes as being like more important than evidence or data on the matter, um, which is just that if if what you're saying is true, then you should have no problem providing like a scientific study for it. Um, otherwise, what you're saying is not in line with reality, in which case there's just nothing for me to do with that. It's just an outlier. Right. Derek, and thank you so much. Studies, Appreciate those that. Studies could be made up as well. Proof? No, I'm saying you you don't really know. You're not in a lab looking at these studies. You're also not a psychiatrist. That, yeah, I mean, that's well, wait, this as well. Like you also I've read can't through trust, these studies. You can't trust the system. You can't trust the medical system either. Why not? Me, oh, this percent of suicides is because of this. Why Most not? people who kill themselves, they don't even leave notes. Well, wait. So we know Where's what the we know what the risk factors are. are. Attempted without notes. Yeah, yeah. So, so the way we the way we understand why these self unalivings happen, and Robert, thank you so much. Appreciate that. The reason why we know why these happen uh, is just because of all the factors that are involved. That you're capable of studying the the factors related to this and the amount of like bullying that takes place. Matt, thank you so much for the six dollars sixty six cents on Venmo. Um, uh, also, uh, Matt wants you to know that not all gender affirming care is surgery. Correct. But yeah, that's like, I mean, what, what else are we trusting? Are we just going off of vibes? Because all the studies say that trans people attempt to self unalive because they're harassed. Uh, but I just don't know, like, are, are, is, is what we want just vibes? Are these attempts or like, I, I know you're talking about attempts, but how many of these attempts actually go through? Because I'm also, I feel like when you're truly in that suicidal state, you're not telling anybody why when or how you're going to do these things. Uh, yeah, but we know what the we know the factors of like 
you're attempting to self on alive is that you get fucking bullied right like that right massively increases it i bet do you do you think that getting kicked out of your house for being trans probably increases like self on aliving rates i think so I, but i feel like that goes for anybody getting kicked out for any reason not just necessarily yeah. because of their sexual identity mm -hmm. or whatever but i feel yeah, like true. that goes for anything you yeah, could be kicked so, out for any reason. You could be kicked out for getting pregnant at 16. It's yeah, true. It's a suicidal rate. There's women who want to kill themselves after having children because postpartum depression is a bitch. There's men, many, many, many men who kill themselves because of the financial burden they have on their family. Yeah, true. So, so trans people can go through all of that, and then also they can get kicked out for being trans. For the, for the crime of existing, they will get kicked out of their own households. Of course, but yeah. I don't think I don't think a parent's gonna kick out a minor that's like not uh, able to 20, be on their 20 own. percent of trans kids who are out to their parents get kicked out of their house. That comes to you from the and and what um, age? Like what is the, the average trans age? Survey. What is the average age at these Wesky, children? Thank are? you so much for the uh, four dollars and thirty cents for the forty three percent of trans unaliving rate. I'm sorry. What's the what? What is the average age that they're kicked out? Uh, Are they kicked out at an age where they could get a job, or like, do you know the average age? Well, it's just talking. This is just this statistic just refers to minors. But like, what age? Because at a certain age, a minor can the, still the get a job. The data for that isn't. The data for that isn't available. They didn't. Okay. Like factor it for like. To, to give you the data related to age. Okay. But okay. it's they they are minors. That's what's given. Because, you know, like I said, from personal experience, I don't know every trans. However, most of the time when you're getting kicked out, you're getting kicked out at an age where you could still be on on your own. Do you No, no, no. These people are, are minors as a minor. You can't work 40 hours a week. Uh, so all the jobs that you can get are like shitty, like minimum wage jobs. Right. And you get like what, like 34 hours a week? How, I don't even know how many hours a week minors get, but less than 40. So mm -hmm. you're trying to make rent uh, on your like shitty full time job that pays really badly. Right. And of course, because these so trans people are, are less likely to get hired. Um, they're uh, less likely to uh, get promotions. They're more likely to get like fired arbitrarily. Uh, so all of these things are economic barriers, less likely to get ha approved for housing. Um, so every single part of the, the I process, see every step. Likely to, less likely to get approved for housing. Do you want the data? I can give you the data on it. You're, I, I don't know if you know, but you, you muted. Like everywhere I go, like if it's Target, um, Starbucks, um, at my favorite restaurant, I see a lot of the gay community there and they're working and they're thriving. Yeah, uh, but this is so they, they thrive uh, despite what society throws at them, not because of it, that they uh, overcome this uh, sometimes through very strong communities. But of course, the if you go through and look at the rate of successfulness of these people if you look at the data the facts of the matter uh lgbtq plus people are, are much worse off than non-lgbtq plus people but so are black people true they are yeah mm -hmm. but i don't i don't necessarily think it's because they're gay or they're trans what so what variable is it because um, but it's not the same anymore. I feel like wait, people wait, are more which, accepting about it. Anymore. What's it? What's it because? So wait, what? What are the? What are the disconnects come from then? Their probably lack of skills, skill They're, issues. So you think you think that gay people are just less talented? Have you seen gay no, people? No, I'm saying when you're focusing on the gay community, when you're focusing on the gay community having less in in you know financially you also got to think about how their mental health isn't always there if your mental health isn't there you're not doing your job you're not performing your job well anytime you see somebody who's in a very high position and they're very good at their job they're talented they have a strong mind they're pretty willing to work and they go through any obstacles they can possible because they don't let nothing break them down but the trans community most of the time they're depressed they're anxious they have something wrong with them which is affecting everything in their day-to-day -day life so it's not because they're gay it's because they don't have mental they don't have the mental strength to keep up 
Yeah, so let's just read a study. Um, this is the study, in case you're interested, is suicide and suicidal behavior among transgender persons. Uh, the results section. The suicide attempt rate among transgender persons ranges from 32% to 50% across the country's gender-based victimization, discrimination, bullying, violence, being rejected by the family, friends, and community, harassment by intimate partners, family members, police, and public, discrimination, and ill treatment at healthcare systems are the major risk factors that influence the suicidal behavior among transgender people. These people are depressed because they're harassed. I feel like people get harassed from all types of demographics. These the people are harassed for being trans. There's people who are harassed for being fat. There's people who are harassed for being yeah. black. There's people who are harassed for being immigrants. Chris, thank you so and much. They're not and that's bad. Themselves. Yeah, so so that's because um, oppression is going to manifest itself differently. So if you're like some rural uh, like trans kid who gets kicked out of the house at like the age of 16 uh, you have literally nobody you are a hundred percent isolated in this world uh, nobody around you is going to accept you so some people are fortunate enough to have communities many people are not so much whereas uh, how many black kids are kicked out of their house for being black If you're off the TikTok app, I can't hear you. You got to come back to the app. Okay. Yeah, we'll just, uh, <laughs> that mic drop. Um, double down. Thank you so much for the $6.66 on Cash App. Appreciate that. Uh, Hey, make sure you're dropping a follow if you're enjoying the, the debate content. You never want to miss a debate in the future. Uh, if you want to uh, join the community, there's a link to the Discord that is in my bio. I appreciate literally any and all support. Oh, wait, fuck. Um, I would love to see you in the community. Only join if you're 18 or older. The Discord is discord.gg slash allegedly Ian. Um, I'd love to see you there if you're 18 or older. I notify you every time I go live. You'll never miss a live. You'll always be notified. It's a great place to learn about philosophy. People there are really friendly. I hang out in VC all the time. You can ask me questions. I just love hanging out there. Um, it's it's in the it's there in, in my bio. Consider joining. We do a book club. If you're trying to get into philosophy, if you're struggling to get into it, don't know where to start, uh, come to a book club. Uh, we do book clubs every single week, Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, this week, we're reading about presuppositional apologetics. This this is like the, how do you ground your morality? How do you ground your logic uh, to help you better deal with these people um, and how to like respond to it, the, the philosophical flaws with the argument? Um, please consider joining if you're at all interested in literally any of that. Make sure you have the, the first 12 pages of the paper read. Um, but other than that, I'm ending stream. Let's go read Parker. Um, uh, Parker is currently live on Parker Get a Job, probably live with, live with Dean. So let's just head on over there and uh, give, them, uh, give them a little raid. Uh, who doesn't love raiding Parker? I know I do. Um, uh, but yeah, again. Oh, wait, did someone send me a gift? Thank you so much for the gift. What was that? The glowing AG. Thank you so much for the glowing jellyfish. All right. I'll see you all over at Parker. Seriously, drop a follow and seriously consider joining the discord, please. I really want you there. It's a great time. Um, I'm very active in the server. I swear you will see me typing. I talk all the time. We have questions of the day. We have bingo. But other than that, let's go raid Parker. All right. Love all.